I only had a protein bar for breakfast. I didn't have any oatmeal with eggs. What's up, guys? Collider Live back here on a Thursday. What a show. Poised to have. Not only do we have the wild man Josh McCuga riding high, we got the queen of death. <laughs> and Darina is here. Hello, Darina. Uh, how are you guys? How you doing? Uh, you know, Ish. there's a... There's stuff going on in my stuff body right on. now that's kind of annoying. Stuff that we don't go through? No, there's right. like the red wedding and the oh. toilet this morning, oh, it's good. and it's that good. was cool. Oh. Throw yeah. it, play the, no- the noise. Never mind, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome back. And it's my birthday tomorrow. Oh. So. Whoa! So you're celebrating so your birthday's it in pain. Friday? Yeah. Dad's is on Sunday. That's is crazy. It? Yeah. Yeah. Alex is on Sunday. Oh. Alex is on Sunday, too! Oh. Alex, oh. so oh. many. My, my, and mine is in October. Whoa! You don't count. Oh. That's far away. All right. Yeah, but anyways, apparently we were all conceived during Halloween time, so... Apparently. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, good show here today, ladies and gentlemen. A friend of the show, someone who was a, a schmoes no regular, a former co-host, a good friend of mine, known for a very long time, Katie Sackoff, is going to be on for a good portion of the show. She is here to... Uh, she's, she's got a brand new show on Netflix, just premiered last night, Another Life. Did you yeah. watch it? I have not watched okay, it Okay, because it just yeah. started streaming last night, so we're going to yeah. talk to Katie about it. Last time she was on for the one-on-one that I had with her, she, we, oh, that's t- right. we talked yeah. about it. She was that kinda was like a year ago? Close to it, yeah. about that. And we just started... Uh, I mean, this this studio was had just gotten built right. when it was before all the curtains and all that shit. So we're gonna talk to her about the show, how yeah. it came out. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited I, to I, meet her outside of just a nerdy, nerdy Battlestar yeah. Galactica. We'll, we'll talk about how you geeked out about her. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to play a game to see if she knows my name. She knows your name. You don't think so? <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, that's how, I, I, we'll say. It's a fun game. Considering how many shows she's been on, with I know. You, I know. I will say that's yeah. good. Yeah, I bet you she knows. Uh, so that will happen. She's we'll going to be. See, all the nerds look the same. She'll be on from ten thirty <laughs> to eleven thirty. We're going to take phone calls from around eleven thirty to twelve, um, and uh, you know we'll just we'll we'll shoot the shit. And I have some other stuff to talk to you about. Oh so no! So guess what I watched last I night? I don't. I don't care. No. You want to know <laughs> what I watched? Thing? No. Yeah. I watched um, uh, Castaway. Oh, it was on TV Have you last seen night. it before? Cast away many times. Yeah. Then what? But it was on. But, but I'll tell you what I did. Why did, why did you think I was going to care? Because <laughs> I'm not done with my story. <laughs> okay. So my wife and I were watching. I don't know what the hell we were watching. Oh, I started watching Comedians with Cars. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we watched cars. that did last night the... too. With Eddie Murphy. Did you see I, that? I started watching okay. it, and then my wife just got up and she was like, "Ah, she's she, 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 she was sitting in the in the kitchen. I'm like by by herself. <laughs> I'm with you. She's like, ah, I know you want to watch that. I just I'm not like okay, let's. Yeah, well, turn it off. I'll turn it off. I tell Amanda off. the same. Sometimes she just zones out. Like we don't have to yeah, watch. We don't have to this. watch it. I'll turn it off. I'll watch it some other time. So uh, she she sat down, started browsing the TV, and, and it was on. It was something on BBC or something, right? Castaway. Uh, yeah, I think I don't that, know why. Okay, but it was on. So we started watching. I hadn't seen it in so long, and it's a longer movie, and so and I couldn't stop watching it. But at the end, I'm on the couch and I'm watching. It's around eleven o'clock, and I go, you know what? So I search for the thing just to see when it's going to air, when it's going to be. And it says, it's on demand. Watch now. So, Josh, I shit you not. <laughs> My thumb went to the OK button. I went to push it. And I said, it's fucking late. I went to sleep. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, at least you know there's an option. I was, I was close. And, I, and I waited here patiently to uh, for your story. I know. And well, that's, listen, you know, that's but, what the story was. And but, you didn't watch it. It's my you, birthday tomorrow. You should watch it for my birthday since I, it's on demand. I will definitely won't do that. But, I, I, <laughs> but what, I, what I said, though, what as I was sitting there, <laughs> and I had it on... Uh, <laughs> Who could like that one? <laughs> so happy for you. It was the delivery was for. <laughs> I definitely won't do that. Yeah. yeah, but I but I sat there and I but I will tell you this that I'm getting closer and closer because as I sat there I said you know what I almost wish that I didn't watch Castaway and if this was an hour earlier I might have hit that OK button mm-hmm. and watched it uh, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I want you to watch the thing in the theater though. I don't want you watching where well, you're distracted. You're, you're asking for a lot That's of stuff. That's a big right? ask. You're asking for a lot. Mm-hmm. What's okay. going on with my foot, Josh? I got to ask you. No, no. It's, are, you, are you guys playing footsie? No, 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 no. Yeah. So, so when, when, first of all, when they updated hurts. this studio, yeah. The fact that I no longer have to hold the cords, so you, you hit it. it with. Oh my god, that's, that's the best nice. my whole perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look life. at this. Look at this. So, the, so I guess, I guess the thing huh? is playing at the arc light today, and two September. Day? Not today, but two day. Two day. Two day. There's no showings of this movie. Two day. And then Monday, September second. September second. Thirty. And August, there's a bunch of screenings. Yeah, in Chicago. Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> Clear view. August. Like 12 a.m. Okay, but there's 7.30 ones. I am that I'm going at 12 a.m.? 7.30 yeah. in La Jolla. I'm not going to La Jolla to watch it. No, but you didn't go to Culver City at 7.30 when we bought you tickets, Nathan What about Patarina? But who told you to buy me tickets? I didn't. You told yourself. Yeah, I told you. I bought you tickets. We're going. You said maybe. Fine. I have breaking news. <laughs> no, talk to me. You're going to love this news. Oh, uh-oh. So, Danish Christian Harloff. Oh. Not dead. 
Oh, he's not. Definitely not dead. Yeah. Um, so yeah. someone, <laughs> oh, no. someone had posted in the Facebook group on Clarence Live. Not only is he active, can you go? Can you bring oh, up yes. Dana's Christian Harloff? And I want to show you something. Uh, this is this is something that was very uh, funny to me. The fans brought this out. They actually tagged me to show me this. Uh, Makuga is going to love this. <laughs> no. So I want you to go to his his oh, likes. I saw that. Go to his likes and things that he. Uh, you know, there should be. Oh. That's, uh, that looks like yeah, a yeah. new so, post. So we're, we're, you know, he's got the Froms Bronson. Or whatever Stein Bronson. Yeah, if you go yeah, to yeah. the abouts. So go to go to likes, things that he likes. It's in there somewhere. So when you when you find it, let me know. Um, likes. No, no, no. That's Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Keep going. Keep going. Artists, athletes, restaurants. Keep going down. Is it artists? There he is. Look. At, look go, there so, you are. Look. Look right there. Yeah, look. Look what he likes. Look, Christian he Harlow. likes you. He likes my page. <laughs> That's pretty great. Isn't that funny? Oh. Yeah. So Danish Christian Harloff. Uh, so th- there's a chance. He also he lo- likes he loves Stein, Stein Bromson. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. But hey, yeah, so can you pull up Stein Bromson real quick? Let's see what she looks like. I've so, never so seen. So let me ask you, Danish Christian Harloff. Um, oh, she's gorgeous. How long have you been following me, and why did you keep this such a surprise? Well, uh, so there were many things that were factors into this, sure. right? Sure. Uh, there was, you know, I found that uh, you were same name as me. Very right, it's exactly the same. The spelled, exact same spelled the same name. way. Yeah. So I asked my mother and my father, yeah. grandparents. Parents, I if did we were see, related. Yeah, the 23 and me. Right. Uh, and then I did the ancestry.com. I did all of them. Try to see if we were to actually see if we were related. very related. Yes, yes. But what did not, you we find? Are not. We are not. No. We oh. are not related. But, but do you like the show? I love The Clad Alive. Yes. Uh, very big fan. I've, you've been um, a show for the, you've been busting your ass for the show for the last five years. I, I mean, think. I tell you what, we have done many things together, yeah. uh, to all kinds of activities, musical cues from your lovely Cody. He does <laughs> yes. these little cues, you know, is that uh, you play as a noise. Yeah. And it's, oh, yeah, 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 it's like that. It's really he plays that, yeah, yeah. Well, because in Denmark, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but uh, know. the law says that during radio show you can only have voices on; you cannot play sound cues. Oh, so we, that's why we watch. That's why I listen and watch the Collider Live. So you like it? I, I very much enjoy. And you just it. found it because not only because you were on the show, but you found it. You found the show, and, and that's why you liked it. Yes, and I, I, thank I be- you so much. And uh, from what I understand, the next Stein Bromson tour will yes. be sponsored by. Collider Live. Live. Well, yeah, yes. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but if oh. you want to believe it, that's this is Stein. Stein Bromson. Look at Stein. We, I have a question for you, Dennis Harlow. Yes. Do you also like LaCroix? Uh, I am not a fan of the sparkly waters. No. I'm more a fan of the still waters, okay. we say in Denmark. But uh, I do like taking, like, have you ever been to a hotel and seen the like, ones that are like a raspberry mm-hmm. lime that's water? That's your favorite. I love the still So tell me a little bit about Alpha Beat. Now, Alpha Beat is... You know who Alpha Beat is? Alpha That's Stein Bromson's uh, band. Go down a little yes. bit, please. Yes, so Stein Bromson is the lead singer of Alpha Beat. Yes. Now, the, their f- first band was called Beta Beat. I remember that. And Beta Beat that. was very good. <laughs> a lot of hit songs. I mean, fantastic. We yeah. had uh, Falling Down the Stairs. Yes. We had Elevator Whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course... <laughs> jump, Jump, Skip, Skip. Oh, Jump, Jump, Skip, Skip was an <laughs> uh, incredible song. Yes, I remember. And so Beta Beat, then they changed. So here's what happened. In Alpha Beat, they changed drummers. Yeah. And but the beta beat was owned by the drummer. So I remember they that. went so to they had Alpha to change beat. It. It's very much like Queen. How they started. correct, right. correct, right. correct, right. correct. Right. correct. Oh. And so Alpha beat uh, live in London on Friday, June twenty eighth. We had an amazing show. It was a great show. It was fantastic. Yeah. Well, you even say we because you're such a hardcore fan. Yeah, well, because I right. go everywhere. Right. It's so Stein Bromson. Like me being a Yankee fan, I say we won today. You didn't really win, but you no, feel like no, you did. Of course, right? I, I mean, understand. They closed out with everybody's favorite song, "Looks Behind the Curtain." I remember "Looks Behind the Curtain" because it was in that one film, Shocky Zips. Yeah, well, Shocky Zips. Was of uh, it's a Danish classic. I uh, many umlauts. some say Citizen Kane. It's the Citizen Kane of oh, Denmark. Danish, right? Yes, yes, Good. yes. Well, yes. listen, I just wanted to thank you for liking the page. Well, of course, and you're I a lovely man. Th- thank you so much, yes. and, and for supporting me. the show. Yes, oh, absolutely. Well, Dorina, uh, I'm very scared of you, but yeah. I think you're lovely. All right, oh, so thank you, you too. Thank question you. for you guys: Over under fifty friend requests. For Danish Christian Harloff, do you think he's had since we've been talking the show? <laughs> Gotta be over. <laughs> Gotta be over. Oh, man. I mean, now I don't have any friends on Facebook, and now I want to ask you, him to be my friend. I know, it's true. Look at him. He's he kind of such a nice he guy. He does look someone, like he's so cool. Someone told me he was a writer on WCW, but I think that was probably, <laughs> I think that was a joke. <laughs> That's really I mean, good. Look at him. He's so happy. Yeah. He's yeah. got that, like, that mock turtleneck yeah, sweater. He, really he looks like he's seen the thing. Yeah. 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 I wish he would have he taken a better of... background photo, though, because like, at first I thought it was just like electrical tape on the back, but it looks like like he's just it's it like a metal like, door. Well, yeah, but it's like there's holes in the background. It's like there, an so artistic like, door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know who he kind of looks like a little bit is uh, Koi Jandro. He, he looks uh, like he's a little Koi. You know what we got to do? Is we got to put the young face face app on uh, young on face young Christian Harlow. <laughs> so he looks just like Koi. What do we think that Chris, Chris, Danish Christian Harlow does for a living? Does it say in his bio or is it in a language we can't get? I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. He's About, amazing. there we go. Okay. Went to Herring Gymnasium. Work in education to the... He works... Oh, I don't know. He went to Nothing. Maybe he's Nothing. a gymnast. Uh, gymnasium. No, so uh, gymnasium in gymnasium. Europe. Gymnasium is a school. It's oh. like the it's like your high school right. kind of well, thing. It's not a gymnast. All so right. like in Germany, no. you have to qualify for Fine. gymnasium, like, yeah. or you go to trade school, things like that. Really? Riley, are that. you in yeah. the back over there? No, he's not. That's good. Okay, good. <laughs> so good. So we don't know what. This what is. has happened to Mark Riley? I don't know. What is he running? Around? He's probably talking to Katie. I assume. Um, well, good. So we don't know Mark. what the. To Mark. <laughs> Can't find him, guys. <laughs> Even better. Hey, real quick, Thanks Cody. For <laughs> Thanks for asking. Cody, I, we can't play it on the show, but in the ah, break, my foot what, what is happened? happening? So there's something going on, like right on the edge here. Like there's like I don't know. If it's you like just a vein got a random a pain? No, it's like it's like if I if I touch, hit it or touch it, it's it's painful. Like in the arch? It's like in the vein. Do you want me right to step here? on oh, it and on see top. if it feels yeah, better? Something. I don't know what's going on. It's a pinched. It doesn't feel good. No. It doesn't How long feel has good that been going on? Are your shoes Three weeks. That's not good. That you're just getting random pains and not checking. You should check it out. Man, what if what if there's like a demon growing inside you? That's kind of cool. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it might Maybe be cool. Maybe I put it there. You guys yeah. found Mark. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Mark hey, Mark. Is a, a is our guest? Hi. Here. Yes, she is here. Good. I've been uh, hanging out with her a little bit. Okay, so that's why you haven't given us the, any of the movie news. Uh, that's correct. correct. Yeah, <laughs> you right. do have a piece of paper in front of you. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> a burn. Okay, I have a piece of paper in front of me. Okay, yeah. fine. Burn. Okay, all right, here yeah. we go. So, so, uh, <laughs> so what do you want to know? Okay, so first, uh, Quentin Tarantino says Kill Bill is one movie, not two. I have no details on that, so I can't make it up. So you have it in front of you. I don't. Okay, so we can put it up on the screen too. Great. Okay, we're Thank gonna you. do that right, right now. So guess what? Quinn Tarantino says that Kill Bill Volume One and Two are all one movie. Yeah. Oh, I mean, so that's, loop that's like a no duh, right? Yeah, kind I of. I mean, is. We, well, there was we a bought big... two tickets. Did, but did yeah. you see but... that? Like, you know how Twitter, everybody gets all heated. Uh, mm-hmm. Really? People were talking about this and be like, "No, it's one movie. No, it's two movies." Whoa, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. And here, Quinn Tarantino was asked yeah. that very question. And confirmed that he always saw it as one movie. It's clearly one movie. I remember when it when it or the original cut was something like four and a half hours long, and and it was Miramax, right? They said like you can't do a four and a half hour movie. We're not, no one's going to sit through it. And he's no. like, all right, well, fine, we'll split it into two. Yeah, movies. I guess it's exactly. gone with the wind. They don't pe- people don't want to do that. That's weird. Yeah. And and because that was a very different time. Like yeah. I, I remember when it. Like, you it can could, do that if you do intermission. Yeah, but I mean, even that. Would be, but Have you ever seen North South or uh, th- those? I, I sat through that whole movie, which is almost five hours, and there's an intermission in between it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or like when uh, they had a Death Proof and uh, or Ryan right. Ryan House or whatever. And that's yeah. and, but that's a little, it's built. Those movies are built differently, right. right? Where you could do that. I I think that it's it's yeah. You can tell from the way that the movie was shot and the way that it's put together. Volume one and volume two are clearly just one big movie. Um, but I thought it was one the, big great movie. I, it's it's, it's it my favorite. Might, it, it might be my favorite. I and we so, actually ranked them yesterday on yeah. Movie Talk, the first one. Uh, See, I like the first one better too. Most yeah. people like mm. two better. Yeah. I like I like one better. And that's it. but if you look at it as a full on movie, like he says it is, kill, the entire Kill Bill is probably my favorite Tarantino yeah. stuff. And that, because because he another reason why it works so well as a full movie is that the first half is clearly an homage to the old school um, martial arts movies. Yeah. And, and then the second is in old school, the spaghetti westerns. Uh-huh. Uh, and you combine them together and it just blends. It's it's like a perfect mix that you never thought would of work. Genres. Or should, yeah, that yeah, should work. Yeah, exactly. I, and the music in that movie. Oh, uh, the soundtrack is so great. When she's My favorite piece of music is when she's in the coffin uh-huh. and she oh, breaks out of it. And the whole thing. That's, it's, that's it's, fantastic. It's a great. Battle, battle for Tomatoes. Which one is yeah. the first? Yeah. Which is the first one? Uh, is is does she visit the nin, like the guru in the first one or the second one? Uh, Sunny Shiva. The, sec- the first one. No, yeah, it's the first one. She gets climbing the stairs. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's because yeah. yeah. that's, when, that's, that's when she learns to actually get out of the. the no, no, second. Oh, that's right. That is the second one. Coffin, that's right. The coffin is I the second one. Them together. That's Sunny right. Chiba is the first one because she gets the sort of Hattori Hanzo. No, no, no. I, I know that. I'm talking about when she goes to see this guy. That's Which two, one? right? When oh, she goes oh, uh, up the uh, stairs. Uh, uh, Pong, uh, oh, when she's actually she, like training. Pai Mei. Pai Mei. Pai Mei. Yeah. When she's That's training. The That's yeah. the second one. You yeah. know I have Pai her sword. Do you really? Yeah, it's like the, one of the cool props I have. Really cool. The I one that Hattori Hanzo makes her? Yeah. It's so cool. I love it. Awesome. I want to go back and watch it now. I know. I Should we just movie. go? Should know, we end the show? That's the show, guys. If Katie wasn't here, then I would say yes. But I know I was talking about it. It's like... The rewatchability factor of movies is my favorite thing, mm-hmm. right? And I think that kind of like how you and... love watching Blade Runner again and again. Correct. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely nailed that. Uh, the, I think that is my favorite Quentin Tarantino as, as far as rewatchability yeah. goes. One and two. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. and I, and also uh, Inglorious Bastards. Yes, I'll I give you Inglorious Bastards. See, if I was too. to rank right today, it'd be Kill Bill is my number one, and Pulp Fiction is my number two. Reservoir Dogs probably my number three. Okay. Um, Glorious Bastards number four. 
I, I did a Kill Bill one, I, if you count it as one, uh, Inglourious Bastards, and then I had a tie between Death Proof and Jackie Brown. Because I think Jackie you're, Brown's underrated. Well, because you're a Michael Keaton well, person, too. Well, but there's that, but yeah. also it's super underrated. I, I think it's one of his most underrated movies. You know, I need to watch it again. I saw it once in the theater, mm-hmm. and I remember being let down by it when oh, I saw really? it. I was, well, I think I was expecting Pulp Fiction again. No. And yeah. I need to... Maybe that's why it's it's not as popular. I, I think that's what it is. What, Jackie Brown? Because it's right after Yeah, it Pulp came out Fiction. like 95 or 96, right. something along those lines. Um, I, I need to watch that movie again, for sure. Have you uh, gone on Shop Steel City yet to get that shirt that says Michael Keaton is my Batman? No. Yeah, no, I just website. have that Keaton one with a, a random Adam West Batman yeah. symbol. Did so, you know yeah. the... Have you guys the, seen the shirt, though? It's pretty good. What is it? It's... Abbey Road, but it's Silly Walk. Oh, Get that's it? cool. Yeah. Monty Python. Yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty happy with it. Good for you. Yeah. You had a did congratulations. You had a, I don't know. Did you, I thought you had a pretty cool shirt on at uh, Comic Con, but I'm probably just telling myself lies. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Riley, what shirt. else we got? Anything good? Yeah, right, the, uh, the very new, uh, first trailer for uh, Zombieland 2, Double Tap, has dropped. Did you watch it, oh, Christian? I, uh, I did not. I was in the middle of watching, and then McCook and I got into a conversation. Okay. So How does it look, Mark? It's, it's, great. Watch it later. it's great. We'll talk about that at 1130 before we take calls. Yeah, uh, maybe at the break. Yeah, yeah. let's uh, get all you guys to watch yeah, it, because we'll it's fun. Sure. McCook, you can even watch it. It's, it's not scary. You know, well, I, I thought Zombieland was a really fun movie, because it okay, wasn't right. scary. You yeah. know what I'm going to do? Let's save the Vin Diesel Riddick 4 talk until we talk to our guest, who was in the last movie. Maybe she's spoken to been about being in that movie. So, um, Quentin Tarantino. Okay, we, oh, good. We have the Kill Bill story in here twice. Um, <laughs> what, what's, the Batman. <laughs> the Batman adds Rogue One and Vice Whoops. cinematographer Greg F- Greg Fraser. Yeah, we Greg. got our new cinematographer for the Batman movie with Matt Reeves. And what did he do? Who is it? He did Rogue One. Oh, I know. Besides Rogue, that looked great. Vice. He did Vice. That is correct. Thank you. The two, the, the two Rogue One and Vice that are up there. Um, I tell you what, I like it. <laughs> Good talk, Russ. That's right. It's like, it, it's like, it's like Monty in uh, Major League. He's like, he's not the best color for nothing, folks. <laughs> Should studios ask you, like, when they release their it's news, just, it's like, Christian, do you like it? Or you're like, yeah, I like it. I like it. it, it that, or I don't like it. It's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> Twilight, tw- hold on. Let me, let me do that again. Let me, Fox catcher. But let, let me do that again in the, same, in the same vein, okay? Twilight director Catherine Harvick signs on for a uh, for queer Viking adventure. Ooh. Heathen. Who did they get for the director? Catherine Hardway. Thank you. And what did she sign on for? <laughs> uh, the, the queer, queer Viking, Viking adventure. adventure. Okay. Okay. Perfect, perfect. But uh, going back to... Do you like it? Yeah, I, I like it very much. <laughs> I do, I do like the idea that they're getting the Rogue One and Vice cinematography because both those movies look gorgeous. Um, he also, he also did. Uh, he worked with Matt Reeves on Let Me In, which is Ooh. that's fantastic looking movie and fantastic movie in general. Well, good, good Lion. Lion's another one. Lion's an underrated movie. Lion, I like Lion. Lion's a good movie. Yeah. Good film. What? A, what is? He shot a lot of good stuff. I didn't like The Gambler though. What? What is the Let Me In movie? I've That's a, the uh, Let the Right One In, but the American version. Oh, oh wait a minute. We're not right? Even, yes. Riley? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. We're not even talking about the one that he shot that's the, 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 probably his best work ever, Zero Dark Thirty. Oh, jeez. Damn, he shot, he shot he's Zero Dark talented. 30. He's super talented. Zero yeah. Dark Thirty is, is... And he's working on Dune? good. Is he? Oh, shit. Cool. Yeah. All right. So this this guy this guy. You were right. Yeah, I like it. I like too. it. I like yeah. it. So that's great. I mean, uh, good. It's good. Well, now we know that the movie itself. Did you doubt it? Did you doubt it? Matt Reeves is is pretty fucking talented. Oh yeah. No. So after having... that Planet of the Apes trilogy, I'm like, um, well, anything he, he two, does, he I want to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything they he does, I want to see. Yeah. They were so good. Yeah. Well, and but that that should be talked about because I Rupert Wyatt directed the first one and mm-hmm. I loved that it's movie. Good, yeah. And I, I remember being on the Schmoes No Show and saying. Oh, I like Matt Reeves. It's fine, but bringing him on, like I, I like what Rupert Wyatt. Why are we bringing him on to do this? Why can't Rupert Wyatt stay on? And man, I like two and three even better than the first one. Two is my favorite. Two is my favorite. It's two. such an incredible. That's it's, Rise. It, I, right? I, I think Dawn. it's the Dawn. 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 Yeah. Dawn is the best one out of the three of them. I, sure. I agree. I mean, I think it's the best one out of the whole franchise. It's, it's, it's amazing. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do really like that last one. I know it's, it's great. I don't, think, I don't think I like it as much as two. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I, but there's something about the first one. The first one's good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I love the first one. The music. You talk about the music. Music's great. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's old school. Like like Michael Gick, you know. Uh, in that's the, for the second in, in the, one. But he did the second and third, right? Second and oh, third. Oh, you like the, the... Who did the music in the first one? Uh, not him. I was... Shoot. Jerry. <laughs> no. Was it, Pat, was it Patrick O'Doyle? Maybe. It might, it might have been Patrick O'Doyle. Double check to see who's Patrick right. Doyle? Patrick Doyle. Patrick Doyle. No, I don't O'Doyle know. It wasn't Patrick Doyle? O'Doyle? No, I'm looking it up right now. Suck it, Riley. Yeah. Patrick <laughs> Doyle. Um, so what what does he what does he have to suck? 
No, well, he just well, <laughs> John Cena apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's John, it's John, John Cena. Cena. I but, love how like yeah. that the sound just peaks. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> terrible. It's, it makes it so much fun. It makes it much better. <laughs> it really does. I'm surprised it's even though it's very old. Way. I'm surprised because I know it's such an old, dated clip, but it's the one. It made me laugh until the day I'm off this earth. And that is um the, the, the what's what's the main shit the video game one that everyone about to fall out of your pocket. Everyone talks about. Uh, oh man. Uh, oh, uh, Leroy yes. Jenkins. Oh. Leroy. Oh. Forever. It's, it's, it's it, the funniest thing. It will never not make me laugh. Agreed. I can. Oh, you have to. Perfect. <laughs> of course. Dude. It's so, it's so, I, because they, the best part about that whole clip is that when everyone starts yelling at uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just amazing. <laughs> You've okay. seen it before. You, oh, of oh, course. Yeah. It's amazing. I played like a hundred times. It came out when I was like a senior in college. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, we were like sitting around the computer. We were obviously pretty high and we were just giggling. Right. So like two, <laughs> two weeks later, the house is crowded. I was living in the fraternity at the time. The house is crowded. I walk in hammered from like day drinking and I was like, it's Leroy. And my buddy just punches me in the face. <laughs> in the face? <laughs> On accident. He went oh. to punch me in the shoulder and miss and hit me. It's like one of my favorite Sorry, memories. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that, that was so good, awesome. that Leroy Jenkins. Um, hey, Christian. Yes, Billy. You were right. Patrick what? Doyle composed oh, the you. score for Rise of the Planet of the Apes. T- are you kidding right now? You no, just... I am not kidding. I would say that's a five-pointer <laughs> in the showdown, man. That's great. Good I'm, job, Christian. I am not kidding. <laughs> right. Ark, we, uh, we pulled that up already. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. You know, I'm just going to go and talk to Katie. I would <laughs> appreciate that. I thought, Mark I, was giving you props. I thought okay? he, even but, <laughs> but I thought he, I thought he was giving a shit, like, like just yeah, to like yeah. do it like a bit, but then he was like legit. It yeah. took him no, that I long. I was legit confused and everything in my hey, job. It took, sucks hey, Mark, is ki- <laughs> <laughs> it took you that long to find? What were you doing? Yeah, what, yeah. Were you, what were you doing? Dial up to find out how to how, who Patrick pretty Doyle much, is? Pretty much. I'm gonna. G- Hey, Mark, is Kill Bill one or two movies? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> isn't he making a third one? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, it's the rumor, right? Oh, my God. All right. This is, this is the best headline we've the ever best? had. The be- <laughs> this is the best? The best? Why is it the best, Leroy? Why is it the best, Leroy? <laughs> let, let me tell you, why is it the best? Why is it the best? <laughs> it's it's it, a you. <laughs> no, it's a like, It says... <laughs> There he is. <laughs> yeah. He's a the best. He's the best. Italian should, Christian Harlow. I mean, come on. <laughs> we should all change our profile pictures. To, to, to Danish Christian Harlow. <laughs> Poor yeah. guy. I, I mean, well, look, he's a fan of mine, so maybe he knows. Maybe mm-hmm. he agrees. This, this. What if he sound, What if we, you, you, we go to interview him and he sounds like this? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, that would no be way. awesome. How are you doing? Adrian? Absolutely yeah. no way. Do no way. Re- really are you sure? Really just How do you like know? me. No, there's yes. no way he says. One hundred percent. I mean, if he does, that'd be amazing. Does he have any videos on his channel of him talking? No, we looked already. Damn it! Yeah. Um, Can somebody reach out to him and have him call in from the from Denmark, please? God, leave a guy alone. Come on, leave he's a alone. legend. He's leave, if he Alex, answers Alex, the phone, look at Alex. Alex is trying to add him as a friend. <laughs> Don't be a creep, Alex. I know. Sure. He's, he's looking at him, circling over he's it like just a weirdo. Holding. He's like caressing hold, the, the button. Yeah. Hold. Just do it, Alex. Click. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is requesting. Uh, poor guy. All right, good. Well, he's a, he's a friend of the show now. Have you seen this headline no. under here? It says videos and weirdness oh. and other stuff. It says women woman plans to marry chandelier. Wait, what? What is? What I is saw that. that. What How do we is not that? lead with that, Riley? Let's lead with that. I think he's uh, gone. Is he gone now? No, right. Mark. <laughs> Wait, here it's comes been, the It's been on the freaking outline every day this week. Oh, I know. oh it's because the know, chandelier is lead. named Lumiere. It, yeah. Like from Beauty and the Beast, so that's why that makes sense. So what is it? It's just the darndest thing you what, run across on Twitter. Tell me, some tell days. me about this. What is this? Tell me, dude. This woman is nuts. She's she wants to marry the chandelier. Good story. <laughs> <laughs> what what's the details on it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it out. I could I could have gotten that out of looking at the headline. So uh, a British woman <laughs> says she has several love interests, but right. none of them. Can hold a candle <laughs> to Lumiere. Well right. done. I believe a that. A 91 year old chandelier she plans to marry, according to right. this report. Uh, Amanda Liberty, 35, who changed her last name from Whitaker during a prior long distance relationship with the yeah. Statue of Liberty. Oh, that makes sense. Oh. That makes sense. Oh. She's, so she's a lunatic. She's yeah. ready to finally settle so down. So she though. dates things with the light of her life and structures. Oh, she says she identifies as an objectum sexual. What, the, what is that? I don't oh, know. She, Apparently, she you're objects. into oh, objects. Oh, yeah. She bangs objects. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, then you don't want to. You don't want to clean that. You bring some Windex or something. Yeah. To that lamp. So what is she like? 
Never mind. I'm not going to go I don't want to go Well, uh, she acknowledges that she can't marry her suspended sweetie. This is mm-hmm. uh, from the report. Sure. In a traditional sense, but mm. she insists that her love is valid. Right. Uh, I've determined, she says, to have this commitment ceremony to prove that I'm here for Lumiere and that my love I, is going to last. Here's, here's she's what I, 91. This, this she is, can do what she wants. No, she's not no, 91. She's 91. The, 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 the oh. She's 35. She's like 35. Oh. Here, here, here's the fix. Here's the fix. This is what we do. We we get her and the bagel guy together, oh. and we put a, a lampshade over the bagel guy's head, and then we get him, we get the man. I don't know. Yeah. I think the good. chandelier looks easier to love than Look, the bagel. The bagel guy psyched. looks angrier than the chandelier. I'll tell you what, though. When I did the young face, the young uh, face app, mm-hmm. and I did it to the queen, it looks like her. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. That does yeah. look like her. With gossip, also, yeah. too, she doesn't even have the light bulbs in the chandelier. She just likes the metal object that yeah. way. She doesn't like the electricity that... Provide. All right, so look, so she's in, look, 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 people are into different things. If you're, if they you're, are, she's, no. She looks very happy. So happy. She looks very happy. Yeah. So I, and we, the chandelier doesn't look mad. No, he, yeah. looks, he looks content. Look, totally. Uh, He's being uh, warmly hugged. We, we wish them all the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you wait? Did you see the other headline on that side? No. Faye Dunaway fired from, from Broadway what? play what? for what creating hostile and angry environment, which uh, is basically uh. the plot line to the Raquel Welch episode of Seinfeld when she's firing uh, lights down uh, on poor people mommy dear. and she doesn't swing her arms when she, she performs. This crew is the New York she's, Post, though. Is this really? I don't Legit. know. She slapped a crew member. What is it? Let's I see. mean, you got to imagine Faye Dunaway still Riley, pissed me, about saying La La Land, right? Tell me about this one. She said La La Land, right? It was La La Land. Gone? Mark! No, this is the first I'm hearing about it, so I'm uh, reading it myself. Okay. Yeah. I, I tweeted about it yesterday. It popped up. I read the whole thing. So she created like this crazy, angry environment. Yeah. The, 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 the play hasn't gone up yet. They're yeah. still in rehearsals. Oh, right. What play is this? It's called T at Five. Okay. okay. And s- they I mean, were trying her out as Catherine Hepburn. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I just I want to be in there to see. I just mentioned how Mommy it. Dearest, and they do in this too. They said he channeled they channeled uh, Joan Crawford from Mommy yes. Dearest. Yes. Um, it looks like they canceled the performance like literally before curtain. Oh man. Dunaway, because Dunaway because she because she slapped someone <laughs> right before curtain. This they is. They were trying to put her wig on her head. This and, is the k- plot of the Raquel Welch episode. Yeah. She throws guys, stuff at crew members. She doesn't swing her arms when she performs. <laughs> Cancel the service until Kramer falls in love with her. So now Seinfeld is the new Simpsons, and then it, it's actually seeing the future. Correct. Correct. There's, there there's video. I saw a video of these guys doing wrestling moves at Burger King, right? And there's, <laughs> there's video of that. There should be video of this. I know. Oh, man, come on. Come on. What's the deal What's with Faye Dunaway with... showing coffee cups? What's the deal with T at five? Is she crazy? Is she method? I mean, what's the deal? She punched a crew member with a ringed hand. I mean, what's the deal with the crazy mommy dearest? And who has T at five? <laughs> you have T at 3.30. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a guest at 10.30, and it is going to happen. It is Katie Sackoff. She's going to be in here. We're talking about another life and amongst a lot of other things to find out what our good pal has been up to over the last couple months. And when we're back, we will talk to her. You will talk to her after the break. Is this Stein Bromson? Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops it on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemirov here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror-filled podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about 
witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Perry here to let you know about the new edition of Collider Movie Talk. We are going to five days a week. We have a short, sweet 20 minute show where we focus on the two biggest stories of the day. You can expect to see all of your favorite Collider personalities on the show, including Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Haley Fouch. You're getting Josh McCuga every Friday. We are gonna have a blast. It's gonna be informative, fun, come join us. 3 p.m. PT live every single day of the week right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You can also find the show on the Collider Movie Talk feed on our podcast network. So go watch, go listen, however you prefer to get all of your movie news. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel. And if you want to take us along with you in your ears, you can go and subscribe to the Collider Sports podcast feed for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. And if you want to catch our weekly show where we talk about the latest and greatest in Star Wars, it's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel and you can listen, you can watch, you can do all of it. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars. Episode 9 is coming out. And then after episode nine you got tv shows so we're gonna be your sports center for star wars do it come on be real the best news to tell you off camera by the way oh well that's a good tease ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh joining us back on the show even though this is a new show who gives a shit it's a it's, it is collider live but joining us back from the days when she was our co-host on schmoes no Good friend, and not. I think it was almost a year ago when you were on One on One when we did our interview. Yeah. It was when you were filming this show. It was. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Katie Sackoff returns. Ooh, yay! Is it weird to clap for myself? No, no. no. Do it. <laughs> no you deserve it. Let Daniel see you do it. But now you have to do it throughout the show. <laughs> the whole That's time. Like, what did we say at the same time? I said, do it. Let Daniel see you do it. Oh, Very nice. Nice. Good. Um, <laughs> here's the most important thing that I need to know from you. Yes. And it's important. Okay. And you have to be honest. Oh. So we just talked about. Mm. This woman, mm. 35 years old, mm -hmm. is going to marry a 95 year old chandelier. 91 year old 91. chandelier. 91 year old chandelier. Is it emotional support chandelier? No, she legit like. <laughs> she brought it on a plane. She, she loves it. She wants to marry it, and the and she does. Is there a financial benefit to her marrying the chandelier? Just love. Shouldn't say. Yeah, it's a very easy question here. What do you think she named the chandelier? Lumiere. <laughs> <laughs> Does anything on the internet shock you anymore? Because it certainly does. <laughs> Is that a real story? Yes. Bring it up, Riley. And she calls herself an objectum sexual, which means she likes objects instead of people. Because yes. she apparently dated the Statue of Here Liberty. Here comes the as well. bride. Woman yeah. plans to marry ninety-one-year-old Shimlin named Lumia. I yeah. mean, is it too much to say that that would hurt? <laughs> yes. No. I said you better bring in the window. Look how happy she is into. in that picture. She's very oh my excited. God, she looks really. She's beaming. Oh She's radiating. She's literally yeah. radiating. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because it's very hot. <laughs> She's had to take the bulbs out though, because those may be the things Little that you tight. can't. Exactly. No. No. You're not yeah, going to yeah. come through that. Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> Welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Is this you, a show for children? Uh, uh, no, it's right. certainly not. Um, all right. Well, another show that maybe not necessarily for children, or maybe it is. Yeah, another maybe. life. Yeah. It's last night. So I mean, we've been watching the the tweets, the Instagram post streaming last night. Yeah. And how how are we doing so far? Are you excited? What's the feedback? Um, how are you loving it? It's good. Yeah. You know, the critics have ripped us apart. Yeah. Um, Fuck which them. I, how I don't. So? Who cares? You know, they wanted this show to be Battlestar Galactica. Mm. They wanted it to be a metaphor for the human condition and be very serious and dark and that's not what this is. This right. is a really fun science fiction show where it's, you know, you've got to suspend your disbelief and just follow along for the ride because this shit's not really going to happen. Right. right. It's just a really fun show to watch. It seems like a kind of 90s nostalgia throwback sci-fi show, right? It is very much. Which very is more fun than, than like the yeah. serious like uh-huh. more Star Trek-y Absolutely. sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. Was that the fear going into a show like this because you knew right away that people were going to st- compare it to Battlestar because you're in it, you're doing right. sci-fi, you're in space? Anything I ever do, they compare to Battlestar right. Galactica. So I knew that there was going to be that. Um, That's why I looked at Longmire. I was like, son of a bitch! <laughs> you were like, she is not like Starbucks. God! Right. Right. When is she going to say frick? <laughs> There's That's no right. robots in this. Yeah. Yeah. And I swear robots. to God, they uh-huh. do episodes. like We had an episode about Longmire called, about fracking. Because I feel like they're like, oh God, we can't, we can't upset those Battlestar no. fans. <laughs> right. <That's true. laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it, the fans seem to really like the show. I have heard nothing but like awesome positivity this morning, which is why I made this show. I didn't Good. make this show for The Hollywood Reporter. It was for the fans. Yeah. And, and, and it's one of those things, like, exactly, because we were talking, because you've had, you've had a pretty great career where you've done so many different things. Mm-hmm. And because we, you know what movie keeps coming up more and more in conversation anytime I, I mention you is Oculus. Yes. Right? That's a movie I think has just kind of grown it's over so time. Great. You know? it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I'm a huge horror fan. I was yeah. actually going to ask you about that because um, your performance in that, like you're actually, you're scary in it. Thank like, you so much. Yeah, like, I didn't, know, <laughs> I, was like, I didn't know you could do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, terrifying. I think that everybody's finally realized that Mike Flanagan is a genius. Um, his writing's amazing. Um, he, as a director, is phenomenal. And he has this time that is so perfect for horror mm-hmm. and he's really great at, at sort of like this nuanced horror scares that that we've you know sort of forgot about mm-hmm. and then are coming back to now in horror and he's amazing and Oculus was one of his first movies so right. uh, I have Do not seen it because I'm scared of everything I took all the mirrors down in my house yeah. Yeah. Oh, in the but rental house for after like, that movie oh my god yeah I was doing press for it and I was taking mirrors down off the wall that, that weren't in the bathroom right. everywhere right. else around the house because right. they, they were everywhere in this house well we did the remember we did the VR for Don't Knock Twice they did the the VR for that, yes. and, and Christian was like, "Katie was in this," and I was like, "I don't care, I'm dying." <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. uh, yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you do you think that they would make an Oculus sequel, and would you be interested in doing it? Of course. I mean, that's the cool thing with being dead is you can't die again. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm already dead. You might as well um, come back. No, it was fun. It was so much fun for me to play that character because it's. I'm so. I really love to bring my physicality to the roles that mm-hmm. I play, and in this horror movie, to be able to like turn into this sort of like animal version of a, of her. It was really fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was scary though. Yeah, it was really scary. <laughs> I loved it. It well, takes a lot of scary. scary. Well, it yeah. doesn't take anything to scare no. him. And Cody, do you have a couple of, of clips of this? Is this is legit? This is legit. Sticks when Makuga gets scared. And by the way, do you remember his his first name? It's okay if you don't. It's okay if you don't remember his first name because this is a conversation that we had. <laughs> I said, I, "There's no way you'll remember my name." And I said, "She might." Josh. Yes. Oh! I was like, give me a fucking second. It's not Scott. That's my ex-fiance. I was like, who is it? You're welcome, You can clap for yourself again. Thank you. Can I? (laughs) I'm sweating. I'm so glad I had a deodorant today. It's hot. hot, Everyone just calls you Makuga. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fuck. It's okay. That's the most stressed out I've been all day. (laughs) You got it. You did it. Um, But this is is Makuga getting scared at anything. Go ahead, Cody. (laughs) That's me. Them. You sound like Josh Gad in like <laughs> like Beauty and the Beast. I'll give you that. No, I'll give you that. He yeah. sounds like a cartoon character, right? You like, do. like Roger Rabbit, mm. almost. Yeah, we, t- we take it's... him. No one fights like Gaston. No one fights like Gaston. He looks like Gaston, but screams you like do LeFou. A little, yeah. yeah. No one screams <laughs> like, yeah, like LeFou. It's, uh, <laughs> Is that your new nickname, LeFou? LeFou. 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 I think we should call him LeFou. Well, you guys are like yeah. Oculus, and I'm like, I think I saw a trailer for like 10 it's seconds. It's a great movie. Right. Like, but you would be scared. I'm so scared. Like, yeah. Katie, it's it's gotten to the point where a Hollywood reporter tweeted about me during Us. Oh, yes. Because Okay, so. Large man. 
scared. Large man. I mean, if you guys, it, her name is Rebecca Ford. I want her on the show really bad. She doesn't like any of us apparently. But I, I said, you, you guys, yeah. I, did, we just, I just got a cru- like crucified uh, like the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, they yeah. did. You was, did or the show did? The Both. show did. Oh. Not not me. But okay. I mean, You're perfect. It was <laughs> yes. It was bad. It was bad. So they hate us all. Well, <laughs> I, I sat <laughs> down next everyone. to her at us, not yeah. knowing that that was who I it was. I can't hear it in my left ear anymore. Yeah. From oh my God. Assuming. So I said to her, I said, listen, I scream during these things. These guys. I think it's you funny to bring me to them. Yeah. So if you guys want to move seats, I totally get it. They did not move seats, and then they were subject to us. Oh, oh. But you're... Oh, I got to show Katie this. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This oh, is so, You were like the crying baby on a plane that you can't get away from. <laughs> Go to the... So so us us came... Uh, they were doing a promotional thing for their video, and no. so this... So Riley approached me in the morning and said they're going to do a promotional thing, and Makuga had no idea. So if we could refresh this... Oh, uh, perfect. Uh, when, the internet when, has gone out. There we oh, there we okay. Go. Oh, oh, what are my oh, elephant crazy. noises? Oh, it's because it's Twitter. too many people yeah. are logged on. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you guys have you're filming this. Yes, we're live. Yeah. I pu- I pulled my g-string out of my oh, bum. I don't, so. think, they, I don't think they. Are saw you that. more comfortable now though? I yes. am. Oh, there it is. Because yeah. those suck. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, this is legit. So watch. What is it? What happened? What? <laughs> <laughs> He's still, you're still screaming. Like, you know it's fake and you're still screaming. I'm scared to death. It, what is she going to do? And it's all legit. Like it's, Look at the publicist the just publicist giggling. So publicists think it's the funniest it, it, thing ever. Ever. And this, he was, he, oh, my God. Can we please go to Halloween Horror Nights together? That's yes, what I thought. Would you come? Can we go? Yes. yes. He, we're, if, now, now it's a sell. Can I wear a body cam and follow him everywhere? Yes. Easily. Like yes. Easily. You want to come with us for sure because we already planned on 100%. doing that. Okay. You come with, okay good. So when I was filming Oculus, though, yeah. when they offered me this role, they hadn't cast the children yet, and oh. it was written as like a five and a six year old. And I, I mean, there are scenes where I am f- physically strangling mm-hmm. these yeah. children yeah. and like beating the crap out of them. And mm-hmm. I was like, I, I, I can't. Them, yeah. I don't know if I can do this with these right. children. They're like, it's already come down. They're going to be twelve and thirteen. Uh, it's okay. fine. And yeah. we had like, you're like, words. I can beat up a twelve year old. No, I'm That's fine. fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine smacking around a twelve year old. That's They're old enough to drive. You're going to. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is um, in the Hollywood Reporter repeats that you like to beat up twelve year olds. So exactly. Just, just leave it to Tim Goodman. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but uh, Tim Goodman is friends. It didn't bother with me at all. It didn't bother me no, at all. Obviously, but, uh, but that's the thing. But it's, no, but, I remember his but name now. Isn't it harder though to, when that when that happens though? Because we try. We we know that's part of the business, right? We know that we're gonna, you're going to get. Not everyone's going to love everything you do. No matter mm-hmm. whether you're doing movies, TV, this show, whatever it is, you're going to have your harsh critics. But it's yeah. still, we're still human beings, and it's hard for us to to get over it. Yeah, and I think that there are certain people that like. I've never in 25 years in this business <coughs> cried by anything that anyone has ever written. Right. I was crying after I read this. Really? It was so uh, purposefully mean yeah. that it was like beyond this is my review. Um, it was just really crazy. Yeah. Do you feel like it was crazy. more so like on purpose yeah. to, to actually oh, yeah. get clicks? Oh, yeah. No, either that or like just hates Netflix. Right? Oh, which oh, may be true. Things. I have no so idea. I have no idea. Go against the man. I'm going to send him a muffin basket. I think I'm going like to. It. What kind like of muffins? That. I don't know. Like the ones everyone hates. Yeah. <laughs> like like, what, like or blueberry like or something? Some what, weird what muffin yeah. that they, no one ever buys. Yeah. And I'm going to send him a basket of them. Like a kale muffin. Yeah. Can I sign one of my teenage headshots that he can give to Rebecca for as part of the bucket? We should just basket. do a team basket. Totally, yeah, <laughs> hysterical. Great. Uh, but you know, it, like, like I said, it, it's we're, we're human beings, and we, and it's also it's one of the things maybe because you you are also a producer on this show, mm. so there's a lot more mm-hmm. at stake for you on this too. It's it, yeah. it, and it's more in, it's not just the job. A lot of sometimes I know I know you for a long time. You, yeah. Everything you do, you put your your heart and soul into. But this is a lot different because you're a producer on it too, right? Yeah, I worked really hard on this yeah. one. Like I mean, it has I've like been eat, breathing, and sleeping this project since mm-hmm. we pitched Netflix a year and a half ago. Yeah. So uh, you know, this has been like my life for almost two years now, and. Um, really passionate about it, worked so hard and created, you know, such a positive, fun work environment yeah. that I want to go back just because I love everyone we were with. Mm-hmm. And and I feel responsible in some way to make sure we all have jobs next year, right. you know. And so there's a lot of pressure on me that I'd never I'd taken for granted because I'd never been the lead lead of a show. Um, and it's, this is your first time producing. Yeah, and it's a it's a lot of work. There's a lot of you know, yeah, and you sort of have to just not take anything personally and just let the fans decide. You know, right? Well, so far and it seems so far so good. The fans themselves. I mean, you see that a lot of times with critics on Rotten Tomatoes, it's like twenty three percent or whatever it might be, mm. and then it's like 90 percent yeah. with a fan. That's what and that's what you're aiming for anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I think also like you get compared in the genre so many times to massive 
narrative budget right. TV shows and films. And this is a very, very small budget show. You know, we're, we're not going to compete with Altered Carbon. There's just not, it's right. not going to happen. I don't want you, you know? to because I don't really even like that show. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what this is it? more your type of show. I, yeah. I, I, I've watched really the first fun. episode. Did you? Yeah. There's really scary moments in this. Yeah, I know. Like, Eric, <laughs> okay. I was like, because I was doing Martin, it to support you thank as you. a friend and a colleague. And I watched the first episode and Amanda's like, <laughs> What are you watching? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some girl's nervous system like flies out of her body. Oh, You're yeah. like, what? <laughs> well, here's the thing: is my wife like she thinks all of this is funny, but then she has to sleep with she me at night, true. and I yeah. get night terrors mm-hmm. constantly. Oh my yeah. god, it's Attacker? that bad. Oh, it's oh bad. yeah, it's bad. That's yeah, yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah. telling you. People don't realize they thought it was like a show. Oh, everybody was thinks around. that this is fake it's, for sure. It's, it's night legit. terrors. Are, my boyfriend lived with someone who had night terrors. Oh, They're yeah. terrifying. Yeah. For, Ken, yeah. Ken Napsaw can speak to it. I got him in New York when we were sharing a bed yeah. together during your showdown. Yeah, you attack the people uh, that are next to you. Totally. I got like, your poor wife. I picked up my wife and tried to run out of the apartment. At least you tried to run out with her, and you didn't. Oh, yeah. Run over her to One get out. One she said, I jumped on top of her and I said, head down, chest up. And I was like, that's, <laughs> that is a spin. Like, that's when you go to spin class. They're like, no. back down, us up. No, that's a, that's a war vet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> totally. I feel like that's what they yell at, like, right. beauty queens. I know, <laughs> right? I mean, it's intense. That Like, the, the amount of mental strain that goes through watching horror films for me. Like, when we had the writers for Conjuring on, yes. oh, that's for right. a while, I was having these crazy night terrors. My, and Amanda was like, what are you screaming about? I was like, I think it was those conjuring writers. I think there's a spirit around. I'm like, I'm constantly scared. It's it's a situation. You yeah. sort of sound like a fainting goat. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you totally. sort of do. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. absolutely love it. Is yeah. it anyone's ringtone yet, or would, that, <laughs> would I be a new? Yeah, that, that's that's a good one. Well, there's yeah, there's a lot of different. He he's given us so much magic. Yeah. Yes. Well, listen, you're a good sport if it actually <laughs> yes. is that it's debilitating. Yeah. So. Well, in anything for the bit. You anything know what I mean? Just... Anything for the bit. I feel bad. A... I'm like avoid episodes two yes. and maybe seven. <laughs> yet you want to go to Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> I also do. I also There's do. Show, so tell me a little bit more about you know, so what you learned from producing and mm. being so involved in it. Is it something that you want to do more of? Because I remember you've been talking about wanting to produce and do your own thing for a very long yeah. time. No, it is. I, I think it was a natural progression for me just being in the business for over 20 years now and just sort of like looking for more responsibility and also some more control over right. my characters and things. And, and I learned so much, you know, like – you know, I've always said that number one sets the tone on set. And for anyone that doesn't know that, number one is usually the person. It's the number, the top person on the call sheet, sure. the lead of the show. It's if they're in a bad mood that day, everyone on set's in a bad mood. So whatever number one does from the beginning is is usually what sets the tone. Right. And I took that so seriously. Like I wanted to come in every day, first person there, last person gone. I wanted my dialogue memorized. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be so on top of everything right. and professional that it inspired everyone else to do it. And we've got such a young cast um, that some people you'll recognize, some you won't. There's some new faces that I wanted to let them know that this, while we are here to have fun, this is still a job, right. you mm-hmm. know? And, and I really want people to be, you know, respectful of that every day. It sounds exo- emotionally exhausting for you for you to have to do that. Do, do you think that that's made you just better at being an actress in general? Yeah. And, and has this uh, made you interested in like directing or, or other things? I have no desire to direct. At all. Be- none. <laughs> I never have. Mm-hmm. I just, um, it's not the way my brain works. Mm-hmm. Um, but creative producing is something I've always enjoyed. You know, m- my ex was a producer. So I've always sort of had this like fly on the wall uh, ability in producing. Um, but I really enjoy it. I, I like the problem solving of it. I like trying to figure out and, and make a bunch of different personalities like work together on set. Um, You're a human troubleshooter. I sort of. That's yeah, sort of yeah. how I feel like when I'm on set. And I absolutely mm-hmm. love it. Um, I don't want to be the person who raises the money and I don't want to be the director. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, I think that I really enjoyed it a lot. And and so I think that's why I'm so passionate about this and I'm so protective of it because we worked really sure, hard. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So anytime you put like all that blood, sweat, and tears yeah. over it, you want to do that. I mean, and for yeah. years because these projects don't yeah. just take months. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just sitting down, pitching it to Netflix was absolutely amazing to be in that room and to like see their faces light up when we talked about this show and then to like get the news the next day that they, they said go for it. That's, that's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. That was amazing to be in the writer's room and to like pitch these ideas like – you know some of some of the the really great things about the show were my ideas, and I love that. And and the casting, I was in in casting sessions. That's and, fun. You know they've always sort of said that that every single person that walks in the room, they want you to be the person.
person mm-hmm. that they pick. You know, right. like they really support every actor that walks in because they want it to be over. They right. want to stop right. looking. Mm-hmm. And I never believed it until I was on the other side. Mm-hmm. And every person that walked in, I was like, please, please be the person. Yeah, 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 please yeah. be the person right. because we've been looking so long. And so do you find that when you're doing, is there any, is there ever a point when you're shooting the show that you go, oh, the producing thing, maybe, maybe not the direction I wanted to go in, or like, no, this is exactly what I wanted to do, and let's let's just knock this fucker out. No, it's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. There, there are difficult parts. It was a very hard thing to sort of be like, I'm an actor, I'm overstepping, mm-hmm. you know, or they don't really want me here, they have to have me here. Those sort of things right. where I was very aware that from the very beginning, I could have fought for an executive producer credit because I've been there since the beginning, and I chose not to. I, I took my producer credit because I want to earn that credit. I right. want to I want to convince these people and show them that I want to be here, and I actually bring something to the project because I work my ass off. Um, but that being said, when actors relate to work, when you know they're not necessarily having their dialogue memorized, I don't want to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Did you have those conversations, or did so, or was someone else able to do it for you? We sort of we all did yeah. you know I thought that I could avoid those conversations Smart. by setting the tone of professionalism right. Smart. Right. not every time you no, know right. you're gonna have that one person you know that just shows up and and just sort of like well we've all done and we, and that's you said there's a lot of young we, actors we've, and we've all, all been, been there, there before we've talked know? about it very much on on air and stuff too we, we you and I both at yeah. younger times had to have talking to by 100%. other people you know and, and so that's actually easier to give that type of advice like yeah. look when you hear it at first, even when when we're back at that age, it's like, all right, here we go with the advice. But then you take yeah. it in retrospect later on. Later on. Yeah, I, but yeah. now I'm like the mom on set. You yeah. know, I used to be the it's youngest nuts. person on set, and now I'm the oldest. Yeah, well, so, but, you've all, but again, you've earned it. So yeah. when they need talking to you, just bring out your Oculus character. I do a little bit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I bring Choke out yeah. every character. I get on top of them. It's wildly unprofessional, yeah, but right. I get on top of them, I strangle them, and yeah. I force them to memorize Don't their dialogue. Don't be late again. Exactly. Smack them once or twice. Yeah, oh, three times. You <laughs> said that uh, you've been on kind of since day one. Did somebody bring this script to you or was this like an idea or because you... Yeah, it was sort of uh, this idea that came up by Aaron Martin, Noreen and I had uh, from Hellfire had a lunch and the the idea was sort of like, you know, brought on by all of us together. Um, Aaron Martin is absolutely the spearhead behind this. I mean, it's his writing, it's his baby, it's his thing, you know. uh, Chris Regina over at Netflix has been instrumental. He he creates these things and, and finds teams so um, that is sort of in a sense a Netflix internal creation as mm-hmm. well like they know what works they know what doesn't work right. you know um, they've so it, it's sort of like a whole team collaboration there and and um, I was just one little cog in the wheel and so. everybody hears all this stuff about Netflix like they don't really get involved they're amazing to work with that kind of situation was it's that this... funny because they are amazing to work with but they're involved a hundred percent of the way you know they they may take a step back and allow you to do the things that you want to do but they have an opinion and if it's against what they think or what their algorithm quote unquote is they're going to let you know and you're not going to be able to do it so it's more of an opinion that you want you want to because people don't realize it too like you don't want producers whether it's at a studio or whatever mm. to just be like all right do whatever you're going to do we're out as yeah. opposed to say or executives to, as opposed to being the right type of executive to say well, this actually fits for what we're looking for yeah. and be those creative help as yeah. opposed to not too many cooks in and the kitchen. And to show you the data behind it. Right. You know, they're all about data. And, yeah. and that's really interesting. But with Longmire, so when we went over to Netflix, they were almost invisible in that because we'd had three seasons over at A&E. It was already established. The tone was established. The audience was established. And they did just sort of let us go for three years mm-hmm. yeah. um, because that team was very proven in that arena together this is different this is a brand new show you know was that the reason you took it to Netflix first or did you take it to Netflix first it wasn't an option it was it was all internal and everything at Netflix so Uh, yeah because of the relationship because Longmire was there that's why you already had that kind of established relationship well I had gone in and I had started I was pitching rain you know we talked about my Uh series that I'd created a while ago and and um, when my producing partner passed away unexpectedly I I really did put that to bed but I think what it did was it it put me in all these different studios mind as a producer slash creator mm-hmm. so because I'd gone in and, right. and taken these pitch meetings already so what's the obvi- the obvious I would assume plan is that another life goes for how I mean do you see it in particular how many seasons do you want it to go because sometimes sometimes people say well I want it to go for as long as we can do it mm-hmm. or sometimes it's like four seasons yeah that's the arc yeah I mean, how many episodes is, is the it's first ten. 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 so ten episodes airing right now um, but I, I'm one of those people that I don't want to jump the shark you know mm-hmm. I don't want something to go for 11 years right. I would love for something to go for three to 
five years and tell the story that we have to tell and then be done. You know, so right. many times shows go too long mm-hmm. and you can see them stretching for longevity or, or storylines. And, yeah. and ultimately at three to five years, there's a beginning, a middle and an end and you know where it's, it's going to go. Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. And the business has changed so much from even when you were on Battlestar, right? Mm-hmm. Because like a show like that now would probably be on something like Netflix or mm-hmm. along the lines uh, to you can even do so much more with Could've, it yeah. because of budgets and, and just the way streaming works. It was mm-hmm. ahead of its time from, from being yeah. on sci-fi. No, it absolutely was. Um, but because, I mean, you look at something like Stranger Things or, or your show, right? Mm. It's, and it's more almost like a 10-hour movie than it is like yeah. a, a series. Do you find that like more satisfying? Because I know you wanted to do film a lot of, I mean, you still are doing films, but you wanted to maybe kind of go that route. Has yeah. it changed now because of the way the film is, excuse me, TV is shot? I think so. I think that it's changed. I think because audiences are so craving that instant gratification and you have no idea if you're going to get another season, you do want these little right. self-contained boxes, you know, of 10 episodes just in case. And I think that it lends itself to that streaming binging, which people love, you right. know. We were talking in the car on the way here, like even if I know that I can watch a show once a week, I'll wait till all 10 weeks are done so I can binge it in a weekend. Right. So you do mm-hmm. love the binge model. I do. Mm-hmm. I love it. I also love it because as a as a viewer and as a person who who's creative, I like to see if the storylines actually go together. Mm-hmm. If a show's meant to be binged, they should seamlessly go together. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, like something you know, like a Longmire was had elements of serialization, but for the most part was uh, was procedural at oh, yeah. heart. You yeah. know, yeah. what has this experience uh, made you want to do in the future? Like whether it's acting or producing wise. No, just keep working. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that. Your goals change as you get older, you know. I, it's not that you you sort of like go, oh, I'll never get there, so I'm done trying. It's just the things that are important to you change. You totally. start to streamline yeah. what, what success means to you. And, and for me, I'm already there. You know, I've already done it. And now it's sort of like how do I live the rest of my life in sort of service of others? And that's also my career, you yeah. know. I went back to sci-fi because that's what people wanted from me. Um, and so... I don't know. I just sort of, you know, uh, starting a YouTube channel on August 6th. Oh, awesome. And it's all about just... About time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have been saying yeah. it for a while, but it's all about sort of following me, seeking like internal joy and mm-hmm. happiness and love and just how we live our lives to the fullest. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because there's, there's a lot of other things that you're doing just personally mm-hmm. and uh, charity-wise and yeah. things. So just to let you guys know, my, my mother obsessed with Katie. Loves Katie. <laughs> follows yeah, Katie. Well. I think she might even be watching live right now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, Hi, Nancy. Yeah, so, so she she does she everything that Katie's doing, and not just like just conversations that they've had, but mm-hmm. it was but it's more about she's like that mom that cares what your friends do. And she like does, but it's also just they, they've you know, they've they've spoken, they've had good conversations, yeah. but but she watches what Katie's been doing, and the Katie tell us a little bit about your charity that you're working on too. Yeah. So my mom and I started Fly Free Charity um, a bunch of years ago, um, and it was just a way to give fans what they wanted, which was memorabilia Mm -hmm. and signed autographs and things, but to have all of the money go to charity. Um, And so we've picked a different charity every single year and it's, we've helped a lot of people. It's been really great. So, you know, when I was at Comic-Con, Selma Blair is on the show. Yes. And Selma Blair has fearlessly allowed people to, uh, you know, sort of go along with her journey that she's going Mm -hmm. on right now with MS. Which is incredible. It's absolutely amazing. She's such a hero. She's become such an advocate for people living and working with disabilities and and chronic illnesses. And and she's just absolutely amazing. But we did a sign and I wanted to do a signing with these posters at Comic-Con because Netflix doesn't send first year shows to Mm Comic-Con, which is totally fine. Um, But I wanted to give something to the fans that knew I was going to be there. So I, I grabbed these hundred posters and I was going to do a free signing um, for charity Mm -hmm. and I asked Selma what she wanted it to be for and she said for the Alinker which is the the yellow scooter that provides her more freedom of mobility and independence that Mm -hmm. she uses around town Um, it's like a three wheeled scooter that allows her to almost be standing up so Mm -hmm. you're seeing people eye to eye and it's an alternative to going into a wheelchair which has Mm -hmm. been so great for so many people and really gives them that sort of that like I said that that sense of freedom and Mm -hmm. And mobility. Um, and so we raised, I was going to match everything, um, but we I couldn't get through the line. And so we only raised $1,100 and we've got 50 posters left. Mm. Um, and so we're going to put them on the website um, and we're going to have all the proceeds go to the Alinka right now, which I is great because awesome. I wanted it to get to $5,000. i am going to match that $5,000 and $10,000 can pay for a lot of, of mobility yeah. devices for people that need them. What's What was it like working with her as far as the disability went like 
like as far as shooting and producing and that whole thing. I I don't yeah. exactly know what like her her the toughest part because I'm Anne who yeah. has MS and I know personally how hard it is just the every day. Yeah. But I don't know like what for her is you know like the is it mobility is it you yeah. Know, is it... Well, so when we first started working together, nobody knew. Mm-hmm. Um, Selma wasn't uh, showing any signs. Um, she obviously has been very vocal about telling the producers the story about how she was diagnosed before she'd even shown up for, to film and basically called them because she was going to have to back out of the show and the producers of the show were like absolutely not you're coming this is going to be great we'll figure it out this is a family Mm -hmm. um and so she really told people as she needed to um and i don't want to speak too much because this is her story to tell um but you know this is a physical show and i think that the crew when it became um, evident to Selma that she needed to let people know um, she did and the crew rallied around her and um, it was just a big family it's it amazing, was just yeah. everyone on that that set is so emotionally and physically protective of of Selma um, and the rest of the cast it just was such a great experience well it's, awesome. it's funny because you had posted something that's actually how I found out about her yeah. disability was there were, you had posted something a while ago and then I did some research on it and I saw her interviews yeah. that she had done and man you talk about strength yeah. You talk mm-hmm. about someone who just is fighting through and saying, no, 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 I'm, I, my goal is to be here so you can see me, right. so, so, you, yeah. so we can do more research on this thing. And I yeah. think that's very admirable. Because it's and, already yeah. hard enough to deal with that type of stuff. Yeah. And, and, uh, private, private, right? Yeah. But, like to, but that's really cool and brave of her to be able to share this so, so other people can have more information. So and, many times when we have hardships, for lack of a better word, of any kind. Mm -hmm. We feel like we're supposed to suffer in silence because Mm -hmm. we don't want to burden people or we don't want people to think that we're weaker Mm -hmm. in some way. Um, And Selma has taken all of that on and, like you said, been like, absolutely not. This is who I am. This is what I'm going through. And and she's, she's doing it with grace and so much humor and so much self-deprecation and she's just she's she really is a hero it blew me away yeah. it really did yeah um i did want to ask you a couple other things though too some things that you probably say i can't uh, don't want to talk about i can't talk about it but I, I, <laughs> you know me i figured to ask rebels was something that you you came back for in the last season mm-hmm. dave filoni mm-hmm. him and favreau mm-hmm. work on the mandalorian uh-huh. bo katan <laughs> has been uh we know that there's been you know she's she survived certain things mm-hmm. any conversations you've had about about Mandalorian at all? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Disney makes you sign these NDAs okay. that are so thick. NDA-ish? I, yeah. It's the man yeah. in the ironclad mask. <laughs> it okay, is. Cool. They've even gotten digital at this point. You just Ooh. put your hand down and they're like, we own you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I have no comment. Fair enough. Um, so <laughs> the, o- the, other thing, yeah, the other thing that for a long time, that we, I guess we started back on the on the Schmo show uh, in 2012 was when they were talking about Captain Marvel. Mm. And they were saying, and I still to this day, it was so funny even we watching did. that I think movie. we started that. I think we did. I think it was yeah. us. I think you and I are you, totally we, we responsible for that. Larson. I was like, who, what, what? Brie yeah. Larson. Like, we'd already determined it was yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know what anyone was talking about. Well, we started that campaign. Katie, Katie Sacco yeah. for Captain Marvel, and yeah. I, I'll tell you, and I, and I thought that um, Brie Larson did a very good job. I was watching the movie. There were so many times that I mm. saw you inside of this role. Did you get a chance to see the movie? I did. And what did you think? Anytime I see a strong woman in a movie, I, I get really excited. You're happy for mm-hmm. it, awesome. especially to a cool '90s soundtrack. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm I'm happy that little girls have something to aspire to. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, I, I I've told you this story so many times. I wanted to be Bruce Willis yes. because there weren't female superheroes. There weren't female, you know. And then we got Sigourney Weaver, and then we got Linda Hamilton. Just do a and, play and have somebody and, tell you all the lines. Yeah. In the back. <laughs> 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 yeah, but like it was just, you know, we 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 didn't have that. And so now, you know, it's it's there are so many amazing female characters out there that I just can't help yeah. but be a champion for all of them. That's awesome. Dude, um, that's what Starbuck did for me. Like yes. I don't I don't know if Christian told you the story before, but I met you once. He did and move my chair over a little yeah, bit. No, I'm, no, just no, kidding, no, so, I'm kidding. No, no, no. no, 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 no you, should, you should you should I should, you should move <laughs> a little bit more. No, no, but um I've only purchased uh photo ops with three actors and with my friends and one of them was with you. That so, is awesome. so that was yeah. like ten years ago at some yeah. Battlestar Galactic co- 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 convention at like yeah I don't know like in the valley She's or something. Very nervous. There yeah. was one in the valley. It was in two thousand seven. That might have been it. Yeah. So yeah, I remember that. Very, so yeah. So, so, so I'm sorry yeah. we were creepy. You know, no. probably. Yeah. No one's, you know what? Like, <laughs> but but Star- but Starbuck was a Great. huge. Uh, Can I you know, touch was, your hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Starbuck was like that. You know, one of the biggest yeah. characters for us. Like easily. That, yeah, she was. Well, she got so much shit for it up top when when it was cast. Like you talk about because it. This is two thousand. 
thousand and what four when the thing came out, yeah, and, or two thousand three, whatever. Three, yeah. And it was like, wait, Starbucks a woman? Mm-hmm. What? And That's right. It, 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 and she said. Mm-hmm. And and now it's one of the most beloved characters of all time. Mm-hmm. Sci-fi it's, too. it's funny too because I think what Battlestar Galactica did that that so many other shows I think are trying to do and they're they're doing now with um with other characters. But it, Battlestar never acknowledged the fact that Starbuck was a woman ever. Right. She just was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that made it acceptably okay. And so it made it okay in that world. Mm-hmm. And then it made it okay for the audience. It was like, oh, I guess we, we can't talk about this because they're not talking about it. Right. Um, yeah. And she was, you know, arguably one of the strongest people on the, the ship. So it was like, how do you fight with that? You but know? at the yeah. same time, you also, and this is probably credit to you and your acting ability, is that she was also... Not according you, to the Hollywood Reporter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll, kidding. Send, we'll send them those kill muffins. Don't okay, you worry. Uh, but no, you brought this, you know, vulnerability to the character where she was always strong, but she was also a mess, and that yeah. just made the character actually right. realistic and similar to all these other, you know, yeah. male action he- heroes we all grew up with. Yeah. You know, I th- well, sorry. Yeah. No, just... no, I think so many times they they create these female characters and they give them zero vulnerability mm-hmm. and zero weaknesses because they think that that's going to make them too girly. Right. When in reality, the vulnerabilities of the woman are what make us so strong. Mm-hmm. And and so it was it's all encompassing for Starbuck that she had to have all of that stuff, you yeah. know, like she had to fight through those vulnerabilities and that's why she was so strong. You How know? have you not like portrayed business in a lifetime supply of Starbucks? I know I get <laughs> well. So the other day I was at the airport and I'd thought that I'd ordered egg white bites. But oh, I the guess best. I, I love those didn't. And so I was standing there with my boyfriend and we'd gotten our coffees and our flight's boarding. Like we're mm-hmm. going to miss the flight to Longmire days. And I was like, where are my egg white bites? So I was like, I'm so sorry, sir, but I had some egg white bites. And he looks and he goes, oh, yeah, they're coming. And so I grabbed them and I walked away and we sat on the plane and I went, Adrian. I'm not Adrian. Oh, shit. I just stole someone's egg white bites. <laughs> and I looked at my receipt and I didn't pay for egg white bites. <sighs> I'd stolen egg white bites. <sighs> And then Sorry, I was like yeah. gonna go back through and apologize to them, oh, and then yeah. I was like, "Fuck it." They mm. sort of owe it to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's, <laughs> duh. That's good. Well, what's, uh, what's Longmire Days? Because listen, mm. I might be—I've watched every episode of Longmire. Have the last you? time you were in, I told you my father-in-law got me a Longmire jacket, as they call it. It's yes. like this, like leather, you know. And I only wear it when I go up to their house because they have a ranch, and I'm like, "Let me get on a horse." I can't ride a horse for shit. I have needs a, to come to Longmire Days. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, it is so the town of Buffalo, Wyoming, is where the writer of the books is from okay. and every single year they do this huge festival where uh, like 10,000 people <gasps> like stampede this town of like 2,000 this is Wyoming? And it's in Wyoming where because my father in Buffalo lives in... okay yeah Buffalo, Wyoming. and um, they turn it into there's like it's it's literally nothing but like free fan signings and inner game and, like engagement all day long yeah that's awesome um, there's like baseball games and that's roller fun. derby yeah. and like all these fun things that we participate in and just sign autographs all so day long fun. Yeah. What a, it, it, I, I gotta say I mean one of the most underrated shows all time I, and anytime I see you or anything I was like Longmire yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's Longmire, Longmire. <laughs> I mean you've had, that's why I said in the beginning you had such a, a great career to it was Longmire Battlestar mm. um, you, 24 24 no. Oculus uh, this show now coming out too other movie coming out this weekend is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yes uh, Quentin Tarantino I know so have you I, mean, I don't know how much have you talked about Tarantino your I don't think I ever talked about can, that. Can you? Yeah, right. I mean, I think so. So you were you were up for the Hateful Eight mm-hmm. role. It was just between you and Jason, uh, yeah. Jennifer Lee, right? Yeah. Uh, so tell me about that. Have you had any conversations with him afterwards, too? Because it, it, tell no. me about the experience itself. The experience it was absolutely amazing. I mean, to be able to go audition for a Tarantino movie and then to have been handpicked by him to come and audition with him personally was one of the coolest moments of my entire life. I'm yeah. such a massive fan of his and uh, from the very beginning. And um, it was r- surreal. I mean, I was literally in his home auditioning wow. with him, reading this character. And afterwards, he literally looked me in the face and was like, you know, I didn't know if this would work, but you fit in these, you fit in my in my world, kid. Oh, that's amazing. And I was like, yeah. wow. I was just like, shit. Holy I was like moly. one of the coolest moments of my life and best audition of my life and yeah. went home and I mean, literally just shaking. The adrenaline was so high. And then um, um, whether or not it's the truth or not, but it, because I know that there was a, a list of like 10 girls, but it, it I was told that um, they went to Jennifer 
um, I was just, I'm, I'm a younger version of her, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. she is, we look very similar. similar we have a yeah. lot of the same sort of characteristics as far as our characters are concerned and, you know, the roles we play and, and um, it just, I was too young. Yeah. Were you able to watch the movie? I still haven't seen it. I still haven't seen it. I understand. I mean, that's why yeah. I asked. Because What's I, because, your favorite though? Yeah. Tarantino. Um, I, you know... I don't really know. I, yeah. I'm a huge Pulp Fiction fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was really hard for me. I, I, when I got that news, my dog had just died. Yeah. Aww. My dog Meepo had literally passed away that day, That's that it. morning. Yeah. And then I got the news that I didn't get it. I fell on the floor yeah. and was like sobbing. I was like, Ugh. what? It else feels like is it, it, right. It's, like, it's those piling up days. <laughs> but, days. But it shows the fighter in you too, because like that, a lot of people are just like, oh, screw this. What am I doing? This is not working. You don't do that. You mm. you then go, all right. Well, what's next? Yeah. And not even just like I said, not even in your work with everything with working with your mother, with getting these these charities and, and helping other people too. Because like you even said earlier. Ten years ago, Katie Sackhoff is very different from from today. Of course, because we look at things that we mature, and mm-hmm. I think that we you probably learned a lot from that experience too of that day, right? Because even the sadness. Yeah, no, yeah. all of it. What I've learned is that, like, I mean, I've I think we all know this, but I, I truly believe that failure doesn't exist. Everything that you do in life produces a result. It yeah. may just not be the result that you wanted, and you won't understand what it all was for until you've got the benefit of hindsight at the end of your life, you know? Yeah. But, like, that didn't happen for whatever reason, um, and I don't know why. It, it just it was what it was. Um, I probably should watch the movie at some point, but, you know, and it's also one of these things. I really want this to work. I really want another life to work, but it is a lesson in Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. There's nothing I can do about it. I gave it everything I had. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I held nothing back. I have no regrets. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, awesome. It you seems know? like what you've also taken out of all these things for you is relationships. Because look mm-hmm. already with Netflix, the relationship with Longmire yeah. turns into this, right? The experience of being that positive force at, during this show. Mm-hmm. If the show goes three seasons, four seasons, right. and afterwards, like, what do we do next? You've got to be the person that people want to work with right. twice, you know? Right. Like, you don't want to be that person that has the career that's worked with every director in Hollywood one time. Right. You know? It doesn't matter um, how talented you are. No, it doesn't matter. If you're an asshole, nobody gives a shit, mm-hmm. you right. know? Like, I never wanted to be that actor that was, like, that actor, you know? Right. And, like, I know those actors. I've lived with those actors. <laughs> right. Like, you don't you don't want that in your life. That is a hard thing to have to deal with. You know, people work with you because you bring something to the table, but they really don't like you. Right. We had you know? Tart Garner in uh, last week talking about that. And what kids. an asshole. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's great. And he was talking about, he's like, you know, sometimes there are really tough actors to work with that mm. do an amazing job. Yeah. And it's like, shit, I kind of need to hire this person again because right. they get results. Yeah. And then there's shitty actors that are shitty people. Yes. And those are the people that you just can talk aside and I, I don't know again I, I'm trying to be the nicest person to everybody all the time yeah. and I think that you know when I hear like they're really tough to work with like then why do we keep working with I know. them exactly I know well, because they because they at the time, they produce either box office results mm-hmm. or business yeah. and everything, or and then they, when they or stop. Or they fill a quota. They right. sell foreign. They've got right. this. They da, da, da. And so they get picked constantly yeah. but until I, they but, don't. But, but times have changed, right. right? Because I feel like it was more tolerated back in the day, right? And now you're seeing that. It's like, nope, I that person's so. not a good you're, person. You're no. kind or, of or, or is that not? Like, is that not true? No, I think, it, the I same think those thing? people always work. They yeah. always work. They always, like, if you continue to have an audience, you'll always work, and people will just always put up with it. Even if you're a dick. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So you talked a lot about uh, bringing physicality to a role, to all your mm-hmm. roles, that kind of stuff. As a person who, work, what do you do to work out? Are you like oh a plot? Do you spin? Do you have a trainer? So like, this yeah. one was more so than, than the rest of them, right? Yeah, this was crazy. So yeah. I wanted this character to look differently than any of the characters I'd played before. I wanted her, because she comes out of cryosleep. And since we were taking so much creative license on this one, in my mind, cryosleep was a almost like a vegetated state where they they kept you alive. So you're not... You're not frozen completely Mm -hmm. you know you are just kept barely alive given enough nutrients to stay alive but they're not like feeding you mcdonald's right Mm -hmm. so i wanted to wake up out of cryosleep weak and very lean um and so for me that was losing a lot of weight i mean not a lot but like 10 pounds and i did that Uh on my own they didn't ask me to do it i wanted to do it character choice i wanted her to look differently than i'd ever looked and so I um, and I was still healthy, mm-hmm. but I was I was down to a very low body percentage of fat, and and I 
I don't want it. It's not my walking around weight. It's not yeah, fun. Right. Um, but it was it was hard. I worked out every day. I was eating 1,600 calories. Oof. No Oof. alcohol, no gluten, no dairy, no, no sugar, fun. no nothing. <laughs> yeah. And no working fun. out every morning, even at 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Just gym you... stuff or what were you doing? Um, when I was there, I'd ha- I got the body, so I just had to maintain at that point. So it was at least 20 minutes of cardio a day that was hard-hitting cardio. Mm-hmm. And then I would do bands in my trailer like Oof. during breaks and stuff and a lot of pull-ups and push-ups. But and you still keep up and... exercise because you're very, you're very much into exercise. Exercise and you've been doing that yeah. for forever, but not at that. At that, did you, yeah. but did you put on weight throughout the show? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, when I a boxer did. weighs in, yeah. and I did. So I, I was at like I naturally sit at like one forty four. Mm-hmm. I was down to one thirty four when wow. we started, and then I finished the series at one thirty seven, which oh, was wow. sort oh, of wow. the plan. Sure. Yeah. And then I was back to my normal weight by Christmas. By the fun it? time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, in Riddick, you, in Riddick, you you bulked up, right? So in Riddick, the interesting thing is that my character in Riddick is twenty pounds heavier than my character on this show Whoa. so that's oh, wow. it I mean just oh, to wow. show you the difference like and they look different you know mm-hmm. I wanted that character in Riddick to look like a bruiser mm-hmm. right. so I just worked out as heavy as I could and ate a lot of calories well, and then you did just, Oculus and killed no, and then I did <laughs> then, yeah. exactly and just did a lot of crap right. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about Riddick for a second because the news came out today um, Vin Diesel confirms that Riddick 4 script it's written mm. um, now that's something I don't know if you have an NDA over there now too but no. okay so you and, you, and, you and Vin have been pretty Pretty close, and that that character survived. Mm-hmm. Any chance to come back? From Probably Riddick not. No? no, I haven't heard anything of it, and I know that at last idea the the idea was to go into the um, underverse, okay. which my character wouldn't be in. Okay, um, so which is fine. I'm such a fan of the series; I can't wait to see what they do with it. Sure. It was such a dream role for me to work with him and and David Tui, and I just yeah. Well, what's what's next then? Because I mean, obviously we have this show. We're do, are we doing some more? Because you do a lot of voiceover work. I do a lot of voiceover. Yeah. What, yeah. What's going? What else you got in the in the uh, pipeline? Stuff I can't talk about. Oh damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, look, I, I see what you're doing. 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 Actually, like we, we, we have so, a call from Disney right now. I, know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I you, forgot you guys are filming this. Yeah, so I'll go. I'm gonna go Way around. To go, Katie. Yeah, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go around the track here instead. Of, and because this won't, this won't be an NDA thing. I'll just ask you a question. Have yeah. you ever met John Favreau? Yes. Fair. And how, did you do the chef show with him? Is that what you did? No. Oh, yeah. Have you What's met the chef show? You never seen the chef show on Netflix? No. So you know he did the sh- oh, movie. Oh yeah, the chef. chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, chef. The chef. Yeah, we talked about the, 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 the chef movie. show on oh. Netflix. The chef show on Netflix. It's him and Roy Choi. Yeah. And they bring on celebrities. And I was going. This is like what the for Gwyneth Paltrow is the first yes. episode. Yes. I was yes. going to watch this the and other day, and then I didn't. It's fun. It's good. It's okay. I need to watch it. It's like comedians in cars getting coffee, but it's John Favreau, Roy Choi. Favorite show ever, by the way. It's amazing. The new season just launched. I know it did. Eddie Murphy. Did you see the last one with it? Did you see Eddie Murphy? Obsessed with it. No, I haven't. Not yet. Eddie Murphy. What's your favorite episode of comedians? And cars. Oof. I watch. I mean, the, Se- Sebastian not only uh, a friend of mine. He's on this season too. He's on the season again. Yeah. Sebastian's w- is one of my favorites. So watching mm. him was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think because they're uh, both like so very similar. I love the one he and Fallon went out to like Long Island, and that woman came running out of the <laughs> diner, and she's like, "I need your pictures." And they're like, "All right." Uh, I like. It. It. Wasn't Larry David? The Larry David one Larry was David pretty was good. Was great. Yeah. The Kramer was one was very yeah. funny. That was too. funny. Amy yeah. Schumer was funny too. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Amy Schumer. Who else did I really like? The Tina Fey one was fantastic. Tina Fey was funny. Um, he got, yeah, there's just so many episodes. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's I've such mi- a good yeah, show. I've missed way too many. Like I tried, I told them I tried, I watched like, like 10 minutes of the Eddie Murphy one last night and Sadie was like, she was just, it's not, the easiest binge on the planet. It's only like 12 yeah. to 16 I know. minutes. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to watch it on my yeah. own. But, um, anyway, so, well, that's good. You got a lot of other things that you're working on that we can't talk about yet, Yes. but we'll talk about it when you can. Yeah, um, it may be a year. All right. uh, <laughs> Maybe a long fair. time. How uh, often do Petey? Uh, Petey? How Petey often? Is, how, do... When was the last time you saw Petey? Yeah. yeah. How's Petey, Petey doing? Petey? Yeah. Petey? Who's Petey? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> no. We don't know. Petey? Petey? How about often do people misspell your name? I want to know. Like yes. when they when they write. Katie. A lot. Yeah. They misspell either the first name or the last name. Okay. It's It happens. I tweeted this thing or Instagram, this thing from high school the other day that I was like, a girl with a dream. And I didn't even realize they'd spell my name wrong because I'm so <laughs> used to seeing it spelled wrong. And Selma Blair pointed it out and they were like, Skack off. <laughs> <laughs> and it was right. Katie Skack off. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. I was like, oh, my God, they misspelled my name. I didn't even realize Where'd it. Where'd you grow up? In Portland, Oregon. Oh, nice. Sometime yeah. that show that's coming out and taking place in Portland with Colby Smolders coming out on ABC. She plays like a cop in oh, Stumptown. Oh, yeah. 
that yeah. takes place in. Uh, she was on a wall outside my hotel room there at Comic Con. Oh, there you go. Well, well, she, she was on personally, a wall. her face. <laughs> was like, Damn. She stood she there, dangling. The yeah. whole time. It was left. really creepy. She was yeah. cleaning the window. She's like, Wait. Katie, to let me in. She's trying to get yeah. people to watch it. You should yeah. watch now, my new way show. Way under her body weight now. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing is funny too. Is uh, talking about we just did a schmodown in at Comic Con. Yes. Uh, live show. So not counting the the first one we ever did, like the you know the the offshoot one, the actual official tournament match that we ever did was Ken Napsok mm. versus Katie uh-huh. Sackett. Yes. Who won? Not uh, me. You came close no, I though. Did, you did. It you was guessed Alyssa that Alyssa Milano. Milano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like we like who was the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando, and she never seen the movie at the time, right? Goes. I don't know, Alyssa Milano. Every like, yeah. just like, <laughs> she, she's like, she's like, what? Holy shit! And the whole place like loses it. That was when we knew that it was going to be pretty crazy. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty funny, funny actually. She yeah. was the original guesser. It yeah, was. Yeah, original guesser. Sure it was. Katie, do you miss doing podcast type stuff? With these guys, with these, I do. I was telling my publicist out there. Yeah. She's like, "So, how do you know Christian?" I was like, first podcast we ever did was in the bathroom <laughs> at his house with me and Mark." Right, that's true. It was based. I mean, it wasn't in the bathroom, but it might have been. It, no, the first one we did was it was in my. It was the room that eventually became. Um, it eventually became my daughter's room. Yes, it in was the back. Just, yeah. yeah, it was in the back. It was a back room, and then that turned into Toad Hop. To where yes. you, were, you were off. You were doing a show, but then you were off for a little bit. So you had like three months or yes. something. And she was on, and we're like, "Hey, do you want to co-host the show?" She's like, "Yeah, yeah, so I did. did a lot of them. Yeah, I did a yeah. lot of them. That was the first one we had. Was, we had Sean Aston on. Remember oh that? Oh my God, Sean! Yeah. yeah, and then the Roddy Piper. The Roddy Piper one the Roddy was Piper great. Thing. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. So there was some, there was some great stuff that we had done for sure. How did you guys meet? Uh, Christian and I dated. Yeah. Well, I knew that, but, like, but is that <laughs> how you met them? Officially, yeah, it's how we met. Yeah, we no, met. No, no, we well, met at, w- through a job. We met, so, well, yes. When I was working at Silver, she yeah. came in, and my buddy Naveed mm-hmm. was, had asked me, because I was I, that was at the point I had gotten the He-Man and all this stuff, so they were kind of moving me up the chains. It's like, well, I want you to be in more of these, they call them general meetings. Mm-hmm. And so actors and actresses would come in to consider them for, for jobs. And mm-hmm. so Katie came in, I was working Battlestar, and the funny thing that I told her this was that I was doing a joke yeah. on stage which true happened I had canceled a date to watch Battlestar and I talked about it on stage and I told her in the thing and she's like well I'd like to see you do stand up and yeah. then we had that conversation and one thing led to another yeah. and now she's sitting here yeah. on her show so. <laughs> and you're surprisingly uh, still friends with him no, I know, I know exactly. <laughs> Roxy asked me that though Roxy asked me that and I think it was you too because I said uh, because I, I've kept up because she did that one on one interview that you were going to do a uh, yeah. thing for uh, and so they asked me like how I I'm friends with a lot of my exes yeah me too yeah, yeah. and it's and I think that we, even when we had the conversation I said, said you had said to me, you're like, this was one of the most mature conversations we that I've ever had. And yeah. just, it, that makes it easier to me as opposed to having grudges. Yeah. No, I think that when I hold you, grudges. And we've talked to you. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It'll kill you. No, I know. I, listen, you I'm Italian. You don't do it. You don't hold the relationship with the, with the no. exes. Yeah. You don't even let each other talk to each other's exes, really? right? Oh, I don't. I didn't. I would never say I would let my right, wife do right. anything. My yeah. wife can do whatever right, she wants. Right. Yeah. But, you're not, but not a fan of it. But you're not, you don't not like it. Right. Oh, yeah. No. See, I'm really good friends with every ex. I feel like, not every, there's one that I never want to see again. No, that's but like, me too. <laughs> one that I would... Yeah, but other than that, I feel like if someone doesn't hurt the other one right. or if they don't cheat or if they yeah. don't mm-hmm. do something that's like unforgivable, then of course you're going to be friends. There's a reason you fell in love. Exactly. No. Yeah. You know? like, she only choked me like three times. So I, I did. Forgive, yeah. And just, we only dated for like six months. So that's... <laughs> That's pretty good. I hope yeah. it was in a sexy way. <laughs> well, we're not talking about that. <laughs> My mom's watching. I know, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy. Yeah, yeah but anyway. Yeah. Um, so, look, this is really awesome that you're doing all this stuff. That I can't wait to watch it because I didn't get a chance last night because it came out at midnight and I was sleeping yeah. already. Although I was going to watch The Thing. I've never seen The Thing. Did you? The Thing? Yes. Just like the actual The Thing? thing? The, the, John I've Carpenter's seen The Thing. Even there hasn't. Because there's a new one, too. Well, yeah, 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 yeah there's, there's three several. of them. Yeah, I've seen, because I've seen two. Well, he hasn't seen John Carpenter's The Thing, which is the greatest horror movie. Of all time. At all, never seen. It. Ever. I know. You you mentioned Bruce Willis earlier. Obviously, yeah. like I'm diehard one of my favorite movies all yeah. time. Is there an action hero, male or female, from back in the day besides Bruce Willis, or like movie that you're like, man, that's the movie that I would love to been in? Because like for me, it's I want to be Schwarzenegger in Commando, which is super really? funny because it's one of my yeah. favorites. Mine's all Bruce Willis. It's all yeah. Bruce like Willis. I, I so desperately want to save the Nakatomi building. <laughs> like I want to take nice. over the franchise and just be like a female diehard. Totally, yeah. Would you do a reboot? A hundred percent. Are Absolutely. you kidding me? Yeah, they've got that prequel. Oh my now god. That talk I think they're gonna. Really? I, th- I think yeah. they're gonna do away with that thing okay. now because it was a Fox thing and now it's a Disney thing and I I, I don't. Think they're gonna. I think they'll still do one, but I don't think they're gonna do. Uh, there was a script that was going out by our buddy Ben Treble. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, sorry, so he 
Yes, Beth. <laughs> so he had done it to where um, McLean goes back to Japan in the anniversary of the Nakatomi stuff, okay. and something happens at the big anniversary in Japan. Ah. To me, that is way more exciting yeah. than a prequel. Yeah, that's a young so McLean. exciting to me. No, yeah. it, you know, people are craving movies like we made in the eighties, which yes. is why mm-hmm. Another Life is so great. It's like it's these things that they don't take themselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. Right. Could Bruce Willis really have done any of the shit that he did in Die Hard? <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, I'm he would have bellies. frozen on yeah. that runway yeah. Yeah. <laughs> out by that plane like, in a fell off, He would have fell off the plane. He would have yeah. fallen <laughs> off the plane. All of these things, but they're fun to yes. watch, right. you yeah. know? Like, And that's what an, Another Life does as well, so well, is that it's just fun to watch. Like, you don't need to, it doesn't need to be real. Yeah. You don't need It's not yeah. real. So no, people it's just have fun science. with it. Fiction. Yeah. I'm still confused as to why the computer blows up to the elevator. Like, why does that? <laughs> yeah. right. Like, what? Well, I don't know the science behind it. But also, C4. as soon as I put down that last piece of stuffing on Thanksgiving, yeah. I turn on Die Hard. It's like, the best that's Christmas my movie of all time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Play that for my wife. Yeah. It is yeah. literally. I used to put together cardboard boxes mm-hmm. when I was a yeah. little kid and crawl through them <laughs> and pretend like I was yeah. Bruce Willis. Yeah, it takes like, place in a Christmas. white one of my dad's white tank tops. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever met him or worked with him? No, and I'm like dying. He's literally the only person a, I want to work with. When I when I was him like, and John Favreau. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Uh, when I was like, I don't know, nine. Eight. Oh, like nine. Mm. I, I want I wanted to be. Bruce Willis and Die yeah. Hard for Halloween. So my mom like dirtied up a, a tank top whenever, and I had the cigarette, and I'd be like, trick or treat. Mm. My parents were like, no. You, you, kind, of, you kind of actually, I, like, I was really good. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. I looked yeah. at it, it's like you're the same as your De Niro. It's my I was going to say, I thought you were going to do De Niro. Listen, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a one trick pony yeah, too. It's, it's, it's totally fine. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go through that thing. I'm going to crawl through that thing. You offend them a little bit. A little bit. We're not allowed to call those tank tops wife beaters anymore. Not anymore. No, that's right. It's the weirdest name. But that's like, I mean, I don't know why that's the name of them, but <laughs> everyone knows exactly what it is. I think as soon it comes as you say from it. Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, oh. you're right. It does. That, that would from. make complete sense. It does. Yeah. What else makes complete sense is that you guys go and check out Another Life. It mm. is available to stream now. It's on Netflix. It came out last night. And Katie Sackoff, the star of said show and the producer of yes. the show, you can't stay away for another year. You got to come back. No, of course. Please. And binge that show, you guys. You if you binge it, it helps us get picked up. So even if you uh-huh. just turn it on and leave your house, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care if it's not your cup of tea. Just let it binge. Just let it roll, baby. Just keep it going because that helps it. us. All right. So thank you again for coming in. Cannot wait to see you again. Go and check out that show. And we'll be right back taking phone calls after the break. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops it on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. New episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hey guys, Perry Nemirov here to let you know that The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. We also have clips on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared, hopefully you survive the witching hour. 
What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Perry here to let you know about the new edition of Collider Movie Talk. We are going to five days a week. We have a short, sweet 20 minute show where we focus on the two biggest stories of the day. You can expect to see all of your favorite Collider personalities on the show, including Jeff Snyder, John Roca, Haley Fouch. You're getting Josh McCuga every Friday. We are going to have a blast. It's going to be informative, fun. Come join us. 3 p.m. PT live every single day of the week right here on the Collider Video YouTube channel. You can also find the show on the Collider Movie Talk feed on our podcast network. So go watch, go listen, however you prefer to get all of your movie news. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel. And if you want to take us along with you in your ears, you can go and subscribe to the Collider Sports podcast feed for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. And if you want to catch our weekly show where we talk about the latest and greatest in Star Wars, it's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel and you can listen, you can watch, you can do all of it. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars. Episode 9 is coming out. And then after episode you got TV shows, so we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on. Be real. Oh, I guess we're back. Uh, but you want to come in? Are you coming no, in? I just, I just said that if you see me scaring you. Remember, 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 we're live now. We're live now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Katie. Bye, Katie. Bye, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Sackoff, uh, one of them. Amazing. Guy. She's so good. That was great. That, that was, was great. I mean, do you expect yeah. any different? Uh, no. She's, uh, so she's the best. She's so good. She's the best. Awesome. Watch that show. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch that show probably starting tonight. I'm telling you, man, like, I, what I, when I went into watching the first episode, because I woke up this morning and I you know, threw it on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's it was also throwback. scary. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. but, it's, but it's very, I, like, I enjoyed it. Not, you know me. I'm not, like, a big space guy. No, but you don't. I did. You hate yeah, space. I've never seen an yeah. episode about a Star Galactica. I've never, I mean, Katie knows that. I've told her that before. Yeah. You're going to watch it. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I started it. Like, yeah, yeah, No, it's it's cool. I'm going to keep watching. Very proud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah All thank right, you. We're gonna uh, let's take some phone calls from the fans. Let's we'll get some stuff. Any questions that you guys have about uh, any of the stories that we talked about? Any guys, guys, yeah, guys. Breaking oh, news. Breaking uh -huh. news. We have a uh, breaking news. What right do we got? Now. Yeah, got something big. I like big. this news. What do we got? I like this big. Like the photo, but we have an issue uh -oh. in the studio today. What's the issue? Yeah. Alex, pull it up. Someone left chips on the microphone oh, in Studio no. A. Was it Alex? Do we know who Alex? it was? Bad. Was it you? Oh, not. My no. I don't eat barbecue God. chips. Was it Katie? So it <laughs> no. I don't eat barbecue chips, so it takes me out of the equation. I'm, I'm not a barbecue guy. I do like those, but it was definitely not me. No. Well, who? So, uh, Cody, you're trying to figure out who it is? Yeah. Uh, was I it? was informed of this by Christian and Adam, and they are in the lead investigators here today. Mm. All right. Okay. So I would. Who was so on Movie Talk? Who was on Movie Talk? Oh, yeah. You were. I was last night, but I didn't have chips. Who were you on me. with? Uh, Roca and Snyder. Did Snyder. Either, Snyder. I say it was Snyder. Yep, probably. It was, I saw Snyder. I'm going to help you out with the investigation. I saw Snyder going through the cabinets to get a bag of chips right before movie talk. There Son you go. Bitch. It's probably hey guys, Snyder. this is uh, Christian, the lead investigator. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need I'm... statements afterwards. I know we're publicly doing this, but that's okay. All right. <laughs> but yes, Jeff Snyder is, uh, at the moment, top lead suspect. Witness. Now, or yeah. lead suspect. Now, yeah. what I'm thinking is yes. I go to Ralph's. I get a giant <laughs> bag of chips. Yes. I leave them on the table, and I see who who 
takes the barbecue chicks, who jumps at it, and then kill them. Yeah, well, yeah, well I, I, think, I think that's probably a little excessive. But I think that if you, if you, what you need to do, you don't need to spend your own money. All you need. <laughs> that's <is> great. <laughs> All, now take a look at Exhibit A. Okay, okay. zoom in on that. Code. That that was the first one we found. That was on the floor. I yes. found that this morning after we did a trailer react. Where, check it where in A? In A? In A. These are both in A. Oh, wow. Now you take a look at Exhibit B. Now this person, this mm. this person's a madman or woman. Monster. To the or put woman. It, a monster. Mad put woman. Either there. or mm -hmm. because they. Did it on purpose by putting yeah. it on top of them. Look how they look how they put yeah, they it on placed top it of that there. microphone. Now, let me. Well, here's this what, is here's, such a but Snyder but move. Here's what it I think. Is. So was that was that mic on the floor while people were broadcasting? Yes. All right. So this is what I think he probably did. He probably wanted to place it down somewhere so he didn't rattle it or put it on the floor, and it wound up landing on the mic. Yeah, and, he, and he forgot about the it. Two. two of them. He's a slump. Yeah. yeah. Look, well, he was definitely going. Though, I saw him going through the chips no. yesterday. I, I'm going to say it's probably pretty close to that. It is. I, it I is. Agree. Yeah. And he would do this. He would probably put it there, going. <laughs> yeah. And then actually be proud of him. Did we ask Rope? Mm -hmm. Did you see Snyder eating the chips? I did not. Did but not. I usually ignore him when he's next to me. No, oh, I'm kidding. Let me say this too. John Roca loves a snack as much as the next guy. Always seen bringing his own snacks from home. He's kind of and clean, he protects though. them. He's pretty clean. He's though. a very clean guy. Yeah. He protects his snacks. He's not a big. I'm going to go to the cabinet and steal the communal snacks. I don't think it was Roca. I'm not going to blame Roca. I don't he think also, it was Roca. He yeah. also was the first one to blame Jeff. But then again, what if he's trying to trick us? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't true. think. You, I, I'm telling you, if I hadn't seen, I I heard as I was walking back in oh. here right before movie talk, it was right after you and I spoke. Yeah, yeah. I heard something that sounded like a little rat or something going like. What, well, that's uh, Christian. What time was that at? <laughs> Probably like two forty five. Two forty five. Okay, cool. So, I wrote that down. So I heard so I heard like yeah. and I'm like, what is that? And I and I was like, no one else is paying attention. So I turn around the corner and I just see Snyder's claws like into the chips. And he's yeah. gonna, so like I'm gonna watching say, you from a corner. Intriguing, and eating. That, oh, okay. intriguing also too that it's the same bag of chips. It's two of it's the same two bag of, of chips. Two bags. Uh, I, I, and I, but here's the thing with Snyder. I guarantee he, if it is him, openly admits it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would too. Yeah. I was like, I just forgot. Yeah. Let's He'd be yeah. proud of it. Let's text him. What and if find he's out. the shitter? Remember? He wasn't the no. shitter. He wasn't. He would tell you who's mm -hmm. the shitter. I told okay. us that he shit in his pants in his car and drove for an hour. Oh, that's true. Okay. Well, Detective Pikachu, we expect your findings tomorrow. Well, I'd like to thank both the detectives on this case and alerting. Us of this uh, this horrible horrible crime. Thank you. We will keep you updated. And please, any and all information, please call Cody's cell phone. We'll do. Thank you so much, Christian. Good to hear from you. Um, all right, let's get these phone lines going, and we'll talk uh, again. If you any questions regarding Katie or the new the new show, any of the movie stories, let's uh, let, let, let's let's do it up. Cody, great. Um, but it was how was the response on the uh, the interview? The response was great. A yeah. lot of uh, the old school uh, Shmosno fans just enjoying the reunion. Yeah, nice. saying uh, how much they missed her. And, we get, and you said at the end, we we got to get her on more often. Yeah. She it, she she slips right in yeah. to the it, old it, feeling. The vibe. But the thing with Katie is that she's always just she's just so busy. She always has been. Right. I mean, she's yeah. just always she worker. She's just so she just seems so she's just chill and just that's, super that's chill. Um, so nice. Always like she and like, you know you could tell in this interview she's hard on herself. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of actors and actresses are, but uh, or just people in general that are, are working really hard. She's hard on herself, but she just continues to do great stuff because, like she said, people want to work with and her. And what a great attitude to have that, you know, where it's like, oh, I don't know if this is going to, you know, do really great, but I'm going to work hard and, work. and do it, and, mm -hmm. and that's and I'm going to put my heart into it, and that's all I can do. Like, that's sure. that's all you can do. That's um, great. Cody? Yeah. Thank Man. you. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Uh, hey, Brandon from L.A. What's hey, up, Brandon? Brandon? How you doing? What do you got for us today? Hey, I just got something super random sure. uh, about Indiana Jones. Yes, sir. Ooh. Okay, all right. So everybody trashes Indiana Jones because he jumped into a refrigerator and survived a <laughs> nuclear blast. That's true. <laughs> right? But what about in the other movies when he jumped out of the airplane with a little Asian boy and a lady and landed on a mountain and, 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 and survived because they landed on a life raft? Well, That's there's two, snow. Well, there's two. There's two things with that. One, Temple of Doom gets almost as much crap mm -hmm. as Crystal Skull. Not as much, but a lot. And one of those moments, in that moment for sure, gets a lot of crap. Um, but what I felt, even and if you watch it, like I watch, I, I like Temple of Doom I a lot, too, yeah. a lot. It's very dated, yes. and the CGI looks really bad. So I think people that were going back to watch it would do that. I think that it's harder to compare the stuff, because there's a lot of unrealistic stuff that happens in all the Indiana mm -hmm. Jones movies. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. that the way that movie is shot, and, mm -hmm. the, and the refrigerated thing is shot, it just looks goofy, mm -hmm. and it looks silly, and it plays silly, and that's why people... And there's also and good things about Temple of Doom. 
The difference yeah, between yeah, but, there, there's uh, no good things about Crystal Skull. <laughs> so Here's sad. the thing, also too, is that there, the brand and the difference between a nuclear ba- blast and falling out of a plane in uh, into a life raft right. is that's a nuclear blast, <laughs> man. <laughs> you everybody <laughs> gets vaporized, brother. Including the refrigerator. What about the guy, the old dude in the cave that's been sitting there for hundreds of years and just like doing a couple. Listen, you and me both on that one. I, you know, it's it's it's, that's a a cup of everlasting life. Yeah, that's that's right. It's a cup of everlasting life. That's that's a different thing. That that. But he wasn't everlasting. He was dying. Well, if he left, he was old back then. He was old. He was a 25 year old man. Uh, all right, Brandon, thank you so much for the call, man. Appreciate it. That was a fun Thanks, discussion. Thanks, Brandon. That was fun. That was a really yeah, that good was discussion. a good question. I'm looking forward to the next Indiana Jones. I want to see how they handle it because I still wanted to see what that Frank Darabont script would have been like. I know. Uh, well, and Kate Blanchett in a good role would have been nice. Mm-hmm. So, Frank Darabont had a script for the fourth Indiana Jones mm-hmm. that Spielberg apparently loved, and a lot Harrison of Ford Harrison Ford, liked Ford it. loved it. George, George Lucas hated not. it. Fell apart, yeah. Gonzo. See you later. Yeah, and it would have been. Uh, I don't really want to do that. Cody, you got somebody else? All right. Not not hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, this is uh, Chris from Boston. Chris hey, from Boston. Chris. What's up, man? What do you got for us today? For you. How's everybody doing? Good. I want Good. To How are you? First to say, Makuga. What's up, man? Nice shirt. I love it. Oh, thanks, buddy. Appreciate um, that. Mr. Rogers, the right, legend. Uh, I just want to know if you guys can give me a few minutes so I can give you my pitch for the. Uh, uh, Back to the Future sequel that I've been thinking about for the last few months. What do you got? Ooh, well, do be it. careful. You want to share? You want to uh, share that? What if you get, what if you pitch it and someone steals it? I don't care. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right, hold on. You, let me get up my computer <laughs> and take some notes. Real quick though, Chris from Boston. That's fine. I walked down to. I'd love to give you the the <laughs> the, uh, the scoop. Whatever. Okay, right. I'll go on with it. Yeah. Um. Anyways, think of it more as like a Back to the Future 1.5. Um. Basically, it's um, think about uh, the way that Doc left Marty at the uh, at the uh, end of the first. house yeah. before he went off to the future. Now you have Doc going off into the future of uh, Back to the Future 2. If you think about it, he goes back. The first thing he sees is flying cars. So he wants to get his the DeLorean flying again. Right. Um, now in Back to the Future 2, they, uh, what's it called? Goldie Wilson, the third or whatever yeah. is the conversion guy so doc goes to get his uh the delorean converted um so now that you have it you you can have goldie wilson the fourth or whatever uh who does the conversion you can have it as a girl or a guy i always find it girl would be funny with the, you know making goldie wilson the fourth being a girl it'll be funny anyways Goldie Wilson IV takes the DeLorean out for a test drive to make sure that it works. She accidentally goes back to 1985 and has to help Doc uh, get the plutonium in order to make the, you know, the DeLorean go back in time. And then, you know, that's the main story. I don't want to... I have this whole big thing for right. a trilogy, and well, I don't want to ruin listen, it. Listen, I think, I think what you did is either... I just think that there, because of the, the element of time travel, there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that can be done with with Back to the Future. I, I really do. And I know that a lot of people... The, the, the biggest issue with Back to the Future is, is it's just like this gold standard of what movies um, can be because mm-hmm. it's such it's such a classic movie it, fit, it fits family element mm-hmm. it fits comedy sci-fi, sci-fi it fits everything it's just a, it's just one of those rare but great movies mm-hmm. that people don't want anyone to touch or do anything new to it because they don't want it to taint what made the first one so special but I think because when you like have like Crystal Skull yeah, well yeah but, but I mean anytime you keep doing movies you're because two and three Makuga loves three and three is really great. good three is his favorite awesome. Out of, out of all of them, yeah. um, but either way, it's a, all three of them. It, there's stuff to love about all of them. So people are worried that you're not going to have the same type of Marty McFly mm-hmm. in the young version of him anymore. Christopher Lloyd certainly is mm-hmm. uh, is older now, so they're worried about like what could happen. George McFly, mm-hmm. and I get it, but I just think that if if you found like a Tom Holland type person or whoever it was that found a DeLorean, because DeLorean can be found at any time because it's 
time travel. Yeah. So uh, I think that whether it's this particular type of story or whatever, there's there's ways to tell the story. So thank yeah. you very much for the phone call. I appreciate it. Uh, did, right, I tell, did I tell one. you that I saw Michael J. Fox on my on the airplane to New no. York oh. on, on, on uh, Sunday? Oh no! I walked right through first class. He was sitting right there. I gave him like a and I said, "Huge fan." He said, "Thanks." And I walked by. Amazing. So yeah, you nice. weren't like, "Hey, McFly." No, no, I Good. did not do that. Yeah, you were not do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, you're on Clark Alive. Who do we got? Hey, this is Manny from El Centro, aka El Centro. Hey, hey. I was born there, dude. Oh, real? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm such a huge fan, Doreen. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, Manny, what do you got for us today? Oh, I just have a question uh, directed to you, Christian. Actually. Sure. Um, with the new slate of Marvel movies coming out with Doctor Strange and What If, um, opening a lot of possibilities of a, of a multiverse, uh, for fun, because I want to hear your Arnold impression. Uh, <laughs> Who would you have Arnold play as an ultimate version of a hero or villain? And this could apply to anyone at the table. So, because I'm not, I'm, I was a little, I know he wants to do the Arnold thing for, what, what is it exactly as far as the Marvel, the Marvel show, the what if? Oh, like, cause, which villain? Yeah, because there's going to be multiverses, like, can you imagine, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Captain America? Oh, I see what you're or, saying. I see what you're saying. Bucky, yeah, the Captain, whatever. Right, it's yeah. fun to hear Arnold. Depression. I get it. Um, we'll, we'll do, Take we'll, your pick. we'll do Arnold as Hulk. As Hulk? That's yeah. good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I am. I had to get to smash something. Why? Because I'm angry. <laughs> what are you doing here? I pick that up, throw that to you, come back. Oh, look at me. I'm human again. I'm dancing. I'm, I'm scientist. I'm smart. I'm not smart. I'm a black widow. Get over here. I'm the smartest guy. In the- ah, look at me. I'm angry again. <laughs> Say something to me to get me back. Okay, there you are. You the sang sun it. is setting. I'm, I'm, sun I feel is better. The sun is there. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. I'm better. And now I'm there. And I'm going to fly. Oh, look at me. I'm on another planet with Thor. Hey, Thor. We're the gladiators. I'm in the fight, but I'm going to stay as the Hulk now. <laughs> I'm the champion. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Man. Thank, just, you, thank seriously you. Seriously, your best impression. That's <laughs> oh, great. Always. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, I'm say that El, so movie, El Centro is yeah. down by San Diego, right? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, it's uh, yeah. Imperial Valley. So it's like two hours away from San Diego. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was born across the border. So I, because I'm from Mexicali. That's gotcha, where I was, gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. yeah, that's where I grew up. Hell yeah. Central. I dig that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, well, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate it. I know he said, aka Hell, Hell Central. Central. Yeah, it is because of 120 degree summers. Okay. Uh, yeah. We got Lord. 15 minutes left. We can take some more calls. So um, that, that was a fun one. That's always a. Uh, I'm, I'm looking Come forward to the What If show, man. Yeah. Yeah, all right. We got another one. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, this is uh, Lena in Alabama. What's up, Lena? How are you doing, man? What do you got for us today? I'm good, man. I'm just. Basically calling him a huge fan. Thank you. Uh, wife's a huge fan. Nice. Even my five year old daughter is like <laughs> a huge fan. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> calls the uh calls the showdown the showdown with you when you when you started off. She's a huge Roka fan. Yes. Like it's insane. Awesome. What did she think about the wild berries? Uh <laughs> I'm a fan of the wild berries. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Josh. Okay. <laughs> so what, what do you got for us today, man? Um I got Two questions. Sure. One, um, I know that y'all are going to Florida. Yes. And is there any chance that y'all might like hit ATL or something a little bit closer? I don't know how. I, I know a couple of people where I am that yeah. are interested in the country y'all events, but. Orlando's like a, a super ride. It's like yeah, yeah. it's like eight nine hours or or, or more. Um, I know because I used to live in that area for sure. Um, this year, the final plans right now are New York, August thirty first, Arizona yeah. in September, um, Orlando in October, and then we're going to wrap up the year with the spectacular in December in Los Angeles. Um, but uh, that's not to say that we're not looking at, we are, I mean, it, we're, we, are looking, we are looking at new, uh, more cities next, next year. So there's, nothing's out of the realm of possibility. We just need to figure it all out. But if you're able to, I uh, would love to have you in Orlando, but I understand that the, the drive is, is, is it's tough. But I would like to tell people out there in Florida right now that we're already at like 165 tickets. Um, they're going fast. So don't sleep on it. If you want to get tickets, you should get them now. But uh, you got another question? Yeah, um, I don't really. I, I mean, I should, but I'm I'm a fan of uh, Baby Carrots. Yeah. I had went to his personal uh, website, but I was wondering, like, what's the news on this special? I know it aired. Is there like any? Um, I any think that news or 
So there's a he's waiting on a couple like distribution uh, ideas, whether it's it's online or you know with the physical thing. We just shot some behind the thing, mm-hmm. behind the scenes behind thing, the behind, the behind the behind the scenes, the scenes. Right. some behind the scenes things that like uh, will go yeah. on some sort of a DVD release. I think it's all a matter of like business situations. That the final edit is pretty much there. I think Mark is very very happy with it. Yeah. Uh, again, I think it's just a distribution deal. I would say I would say within the next three months. Yeah. I think is, is probably a good prediction. I would love to see Mike Tyson doing uh, an endorsement from. Uh, make sure you go and listen to um, uh, Mark Ellis' uh, show. It's, uh, you'll see the behind the scenes. It'll be amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll also <laughs> check out the Smowdown. Go yeah. check out the Smowdown. I'll be fighting oh, it next we, week. We do, the, we do the Smowdown every week. Awesome. Like, we tend to do it during dinner. That's how my, my daughter, she's like, I don't know why, but she's huge in the rope because she go nuts whenever he's, he's you know, yeah, That's he, great. Yeah, man. He's, he's, he's got that personality. Well, look, thank you so much for being such a great fan. And, and we hope to see you at one of these shows. Uh, if it's not Orlando, we'll, we'll catch you sooner or later. Yeah, I got it. my my brother stays in L.A. Oh, cool. I got to get a reason to get out. Spectacular, there. Yeah, nice. spectacular, spectacular. spectacular. December seventh yeah. is what we're looking at. So, and we're going to try to do like a little fan expo beforehand too. Okay. We're going to try to really turn it into WrestleMania. So, um, hopefully, we can see you then. But we'll we'll have more information on that as soon as we find a theater. Um, yeah, we're looking for yeah, the theater yeah, for yeah. December seventh. Okay, let's uh, in ten minutes. We can do another one, Cody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, your uncle Collider live. Who do we got? Hey, this is uh, Grayson from SoCal. Grayson, hey, what's Grayson. up, man? What do you got for us today? Uh, I just went to the down on uh, Saturday in San Diego. I had a great time. Thank um, you. I it was a great show. Thank awesome. you, man. Glad Thank you made you. it. Glad you had a good time. What's uh, what's your question today? Uh, my question is on the newly released uh, Marvel slate. Um, I know they just announced uh, a Thor movie called Thor: Love and Thunder with um, um, Natalie Portman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. In the comic books, um, when Jane Foster becomes Thor, she actually um, like has cancer. Oh. So there's kind of like this ticking time bomb, and her uh, her power as Thor, the God of Thunder, is actually what's keeping her alive. And given that you know Natalie Portman hasn't been a part of the Marvel franchise for a couple of years since like the Dark World, yeah. Do you think do you think this is going to be like her outing point for the Marvel universe? Well, thank you very much for the phone call. Um, I don't know. It depends on how they play it. I just That's always tough to say because if they're going to introduce her the first time as Lady Thor, right, mm-hmm. and it really goes over with fans, do you want to call this the end then? Because uh, Thor is in their fourth movie now yeah. coming up, so maybe they could say this is the last one and that's that's how they, they end it, but I don't think I don't so. Think I, don't, so. I, don't, I don't think that they I think would. this is going to just be her introduction as, I think so as Thor. I think so, yeah. too. As, but, and, and, I, and I have, as much as I don't like the name because the word love is in it, uh, but uh, uh, I love Taika, so I yeah. trust that whatever he's going to do, it's going to be great. Yeah. I, I just I don't know, you, Natalie Portman. You, but you know, that's right. I love Thor. Right, but I'm, I couldn't care less if she stays in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. She, <laughs> well, she's been she's been phoning in. <laughs> the fact that Thor is like ending the world for Natalie Portman. Come on, man. I mean, it's like yeah, he's never been an. I'm Portman more interested in what's going on with Darcy Mew Mew. Yeah, wait. You only get now. You only have two choices for an actress. Okay. Oh boy, Natalie Portman or Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Who do you take? Ugh. <laughs> you only got it. Five. Yeah, pick Natalie. Four, three. Nah, I'll do Gwyneth. Wow. Really? That much so. Really? Wow, he look at said that. through you're like, you're, 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 like, you're looking at that cup. All right. Um, <laughs> let's do Let's do. Oh, we can do two more. All right. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, it's uh, Matt from New York. Hello, Matt from New York. Hello, what do you Matt. got? Matt. Just want to say, you guys, a uh, huge fan in general. Thank you. Cool. Uh, absolutely love Jedi Council. It kind of gives me that like Star Wars fix that I really don't get because a lot of my friends are like, they like it, but it's just not that level. Right. So it's just start with this question in general. So what are your, some of your favorite like side characters that you'd love to like show up in the Mandalorian maybe at some point? Or I did. Like, former... Yeah, is it? Is it yeah, yeah, me yeah. too. I well, freaking it, love, yeah. Well, by, bias uh, from who we just had in the room. I'd love to see uh, Bo Katan. That's why I asked her about it in the first mm-hmm. place. It'd be amazing. Yep. Um, uh, it would be good. Um, I think it would be interesting, but I just don't know how they would do it with Ahsoka. I was just I just say. don't know how they, they yeah. can make that work. Um, but. Depending on you know where where it lands, I lo- I still want to mm-hmm. see Cad Bane come back because mm-hmm. I know people say, well, he died. If you look at the if you look at the canon stuff that happened with him and Boba Fett, we don't know yet. So that Darth Darth Maul died too. Right. Yeah, well, they he, can bring he it died come, because yeah. well, but Darth Maul was explained to have come back. They haven't explained anything yet. They could always explain the Cad mm-hmm. Bane because I don't know how old Cad Bane is, and right. I'd like to see him come back. And the Cad Bane is one of the greatest characters that has never really been explored. Yes. So. This yeah. is gonna piss off the world. Bring back the Ewoks, man. Give me some freaking. I am fine Ewoks. with that. I miss the Ewoks. Ewoks. I, I'd be cool seeing like like a, yeah. like a drunk Ewok or something. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. That'd be There's good. so much fun. They're, they're adorable. Yeah. How about you? Who would you want to see? 
Yeah, I hung up on him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was on me, guys. Thank that was you. Cody's like, All done right. with that. Let's do it. Well, we have some time. Let's do another one. Hello? All right. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, it's Matt in New York again. <laughs> uh, hello? Hello. Yeah, this is Alan. Hey, Alan. Hi, what Alan. what do you got for us today? Uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Nice. Oh, nice. What do you got for us today, Alan? Hey, man. Um, I got a good question, actually. Sure, sure. Uh, do you think Luke will have some action in this movie more than he has before? No, I don't. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna appear as a as a force ghost, some, give some advice. I I think everybody wants to see him in it for a long for a while. I don't think he's gonna be in it for very long at all. I think, I think he's gonna be like an Obi Wan. Really? Yeah, yeah, character. yeah. I think he's gonna be uh, more. I think that you've almost teased enough inside of the. Um, I think what people have false hope at is because they saw Yoda split in trees with lightning, so they mm -hmm. think that he's gonna be able to like fight with lightsabers. And I would love to see it, and I'd love for him to have more to do. I just don't think that they're gonna do it. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I don't think they're gonna use him enough, and I don't think he's gonna have a lot of physical stuff to do. Yeah, look at Return of the Jedi and what Obi Wan did in that. He yeah. he's there to offer more guidance to Luke, mm -hmm. fill in some exposition. Some plot points. I think that Luke in Rise of Skywalker is going to yeah. do the same. All right, cool. Well, thank you for the phone call. We'll do, uh, we'll do one final one. Hello. All right, hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, it's John from Austin. John. Hi, John. Hey, hey John. Man, what's going on? What do you got for us? Oh, yeah. So I was just looking into like um, some action movies that came out this past summer, and I'm really a fan of uh, female action roles like Atomic Blonde, nice. uh, Charlie Theron, and mm -hmm. Sophia Boutella, and uh, Kingsman. Yes. And I was looking at this one that came out um, in, uh, in the summer called Anna that I heard nothing about when it dropped. I was just wondering if you guys had a review on that or not. Hannah? You mean the show on Amazon? No, not no, Anna. Anna. Uh, Anna. Um, Anna. With the model Sasha, Sasha Love. She's oh, no. Oh, I never uh, saw that. Did you see it? It's Is Luke it good? Yeah, I saw Correct. It for it. Yeah. And you liked and it? Like, this will be yeah. Take that. Yeah, I was like, this was like... Well, somebody, a critic said it, <laughs> kind of mean, they call it Atomic Bland, but I oh. didn't see it. Atomic yeah. Bland, that's oh, a good Oh, it's pun. a Luke Besson Wonder if that same Hollywood reporter. <laughs> yeah, maybe, or, maybe, maybe he's just a woman hater. Atomic uh, Blonde is great. I, I, I like, like Atomic it. Blonde. Yeah. Anyway. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I, I also scene. liked Red Sniper. Red, uh, Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow I liked. Red Sparrow's good. Red Sparrow I liked a lot. I didn't yeah. like Atomic Blonde because I, I think tone was all over the place for that movie, and the movie I wanted to see happened in that stairwell and that great that fight scene. Awesome. That's yeah. the best part of the whole yeah. movie. That's yeah. the movie I wanted to see the entire time. Right. And it, and it, yeah. I was I was I anticipating way... John Wick for yes. the Charlize Theron. And, and you got it in the stairwell. That's it. That was that's it. But that's why I think maybe it's because you guys were expecting something. Like I, I just love the way it was shot. I, I love the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah. that that time too is it was a really cool setting for it. With, yeah. mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, thank you for the call. I didn't get a chance. I guess are we have five minutes. Yeah, we do one more. One more. You keep saying. Oh, wait, it's five. I, I thought, I'm looking. I thought it was going to be longer. All right, last call. Hey, you're on Cloud Alive. Who do we got? Hello? Jerry? Hello? Hey, you're on Cloud Alive. Who do we got? Bueller? No one? Uncle Leo? Hello? Hello? No one? I got Jerry? Bueno. Right, we'll try again. Who is this? Hello? All right, last time. Uh, hey, you're on Cloud Alive. Who do we got? Son of a bitch. What's going on? <laughs> the phone's broken? That one person got through, and then they hung up. No, they hung oh. up. All right, well, we still got, we still got uh, four minutes. Yeah. Last you guys got four to minutes to call in? Four minutes, you get one last. All right, there last, last call. Hey, look who it is. Hey, you're on Collider <laughs> Live. Who do we got? <laughs> it's happening. All right, I'm going to. This is ridiculous. Yeah, Cody. <laughs> These people. What's going they keep on, hanging Cody? Up? Yeah, they keep hanging up on me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, they probably don't know what's going well, on. Well, maybe you shouldn't hang up on them. I know. It's all <laughs> <laughs> it was That's going true. so yeah. well. I it was know. going so Those good. Were we're some good so Here we go. Last, Last one. Shot. Here we go. Hey, you're on Collider Live. What do we got? Nope. Hey, my name is Justin Conklin from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Whoa. Oh, nice, Wyoming. Look at that. It works. Is uh, that near Buffalo? Is it Cheyenne near Buffalo, Wyoming? Because we want to go to Longmire Days. Uh, I don't believe so. But I know right now they have the Cheyenne Frontier Days going on. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, what what do you got for us today? Yeah, man. Uh, I have a question and a statement. Sure. So my question, along with the slowdown dates and locations for next next year, is there any possibility maybe to come to Cleveland or Denver? As one of those locations. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it's it's kind of a broken record response at this point. Um, I would love to go to as many cities as possible with the Schmodown. What, what I would, what I always encourage everyone, if you're watching live right now or on the replay, go to the SchmodownLive.com website. There's a request your city option. And we look at that, see how many people would be interested in going. And right now, to be honest, the the top the top city that has or the top place that has been that has been asking has been Boston. Mm 
Boston has been asking uh, the most, but that's also because I don't think a lot of people are aware of the you know request your city option. So go to the schmodownlive.com, put that in there, uh, go to the Facebook group, the Schmodown Facebook group, tell people to also do the same thing. And if we see enough people that, that warn us going there, we'll make it a priority for sure. Gotcha. Cool. Do you have something else? Yeah, or was it? Uh, yeah so my statement. It's funny. Uh, last night I rewatched the raid, the yes. first raid movie. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. So great. So great. It makes me like think, like, wow, hopefully the remake will be real good. Wait, Especially have you seen. With Grillo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the trailer, though, for Woo yeah. Assassins that's coming out? It's, it's the guy from the raid. Yeah. yeah. It looks amazing. It looks really yeah. good. Yeah. 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 And then tonight, I plan on watching the Raid 2. Oh, so. dude, the Raid 2 to me is, is I, I love <laughs> Raid 1, Raid 2, it, to me, because it's... It's the Bad Boys 2 of the Raid franchise. See, I, I would I, I would go, it. I would say it's more, it's more layer than that. It's a, it's got a very, it's got a gangster kind of Godfather 2 like feel to I do like it better mm-hmm. than the me first too. one, and I love the first yeah. one. But yeah. the second one, it, it's so layered, that prison fight scene oh my in God. the beginning, and then the, the kitchen scene. Oh, it's so, it I is. was sitting next to, it was me, Ellis, and we were sitting next to Alonzo Duralde, mm-hmm. and Alonzo... Was reacting like you do yeah. in movie theaters, like w- during fights. He's like, "Oh my god!" Ah, ah. <laughs> we, and and Ellis is like, "Grab it!" Yeah. It was so yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, man, check out Raid Two. You'll love it. It's great. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Thank you for the call. And guys, Cheyenne. thank you. Hashtag that's the show. So yeah. I'd like to thank Darina, Mark Riley, Josh McCougar, Hey Alex, Cody Hall, and of course Katie Sackoff coming in here today. Uh, a lot of fun this week. A lot of great guests. A lot of things to really take in because there's we, we talked about a lot. Yes. A lot of good, yeah. We got a lot of stories, a lot of good interviews. And make sure you subscribe to the Collider Live channel if you haven't done that already. And check us out on the Apple Podcasts. And, and stay tuned to the Facebook group. Stay tuned to the Facebook group, whether it's Collider Live or the Schmodown group. We have so much going on. You can come see us live if you're in New York, August 31st. There will be a comedy show that night. Arizona. What's the other one? Orlando. Orlando. So make sure. The Schmodownlive.com. Come see us because we want to see you. See you next time. I'm not really known from a smart